been um, heard and, and concluded, and please do so quietly so we can have the, the meeting proceed. Um, and all parties um, will be notified of Council's decisions um, this evening as well, um, all stakeholders, whether you're an objector or an applicant as well. Okay. All right, having said all that, now we've reached 7 pm, the commencement of tonight's meeting at the statutory time. So I'll now go through the list. If you've got agendas, there have some, some been circulated on the seats. The membership is as listed. Do we have any apologies this evening, Councillors? I understand that um, Councillor Williams um, is an apology for this yes, evening. Yes, Councillor Williams. And I believe that um, Councillor Valella might be um, on her way, but is running late. Correct. Okay, thank you for that. So we'll just note those. Item three, disclosures of conflicts of interest. Any conflicts from Councillors? No, no. Mr Mayor, I just took one to record uh, an indirect uh, interest uh, by association. Uh, and uh, the applicant of uh, 5.2 and 5.212 has done some work for me in another municipality okay. in the past, but no direct uh, interest in this. Okay, well, you're not voting, so that's no. okay. All right. Uh, so, no other disclosures, councillors. We'll now move on to item four confirmation of the minutes of the previous planning committee. Do we have anyone move that? Councillor Cedars, Councillor Greco, second. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour, that item has been carried. We'll now go to item five, consideration of reports 5.1 for 27 Murphy Grove. Over to the officers, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just through apologies to the gallery, uh, I'm conscious of how many people are here tonight and how many items we're going to go through. So our presentations will be brief and anything that we need to clarify, uh, please do so, Mr Mayor, through questions. This application uh, seeks to develop 12 double-story double units, eliminate the two bedrooms. Uh, there are and then there are further uh, three bedroom uh, dwellings. Uh, there's uh, car parking provided in accordance with the planning scheme just for the uh, dwellings themselves. There is a waiver of visitor parking spaces sort. So it's two spaces short. Um, the report is fairly comprehensive. Uh, it, it describes two sites uh, that are combined to provide an area of 1294 square metres. Uh, there is a reverse living configuration proposed. There. That means that living areas are upstairs with upstairs access to a balcony. Um, the application has been advertised. There are 33 objections that have been received. These are well documented uh, and detailed. Uh, on pages 7 and 12, there's a response to each of the objective concerns. Uh, Mr Mayor, the thing I can highlight about this application is it's it's the new way of planning application we've received in this municipality since the uh, neighbourhood residential zones were approved in all of Europe. Uh, and what we've seen is, is probably a more aggressive form of uh, residential development, particularly through the use of the um, reverse living and balcony configuration, where an increased yield can be achieved. Uh, You'll note in the officer's report there's a bit of attention paid to the neighbourhood character and it's a reasonably intact uh, area in terms of single dwellings, no, some unit development, uh, but not to this scale or intensity. Uh, that is highlighted, but the officer's report in page three and four outlines that this uh, is proposed or recommended for refusal. And you'll see there's quite a comprehensive list of uh, concerns the central one doing, uh, it's a bit too much for this particular site. Uh, problems in uh, the grounds there for the That's it, Darren. Thank you very much. I now have um, some speakers who wish to present this evening. We have the applicant's representative uh, who has five minutes to present his case tonight, Mr David Di Giovanni. Could you please take a seat? Uh, please take note of the time when you're, um, uh, if it commences, okay? and thanks for allowing me to address you this evening. Councillors, if you could just take out the plans um, in, in your book, uh, perhaps a bit of ground level plan. Just want to highlight on behalf of the permanent applicant that this is really a unique site. And some of these attributes haven't really been uh, addressed quite by council officers. Primarily, um, in an area where we have typical standard allotments, it's an area, it, it, it's an enormous frontage of 27 metres, but also a, a land area of 1,293 square metres. So in the context of similar existence, modest size allotments, we've got one enormous allotment here. It's 400 metres from the Plenty Road tram, where policy uh, explicitly encourages more intense housing. It's 180 metres from bus routes on Wood Street. Um, and a key aspect of the design that <coughs> The designer hasn't been given enough credit for has been the use of a basement 
And traditionally with the design you have a, a long linear driveway, side car park and turning areas with a basement effectively increases the yield from 12 on up to good litres to, to you, could, you could effectively say 2,000 a year. Um, and it allows for a much more robust and efficient house. And just some of the features of it, as you look at the ground floor plan, you'll notice that the front setback, whilst numerically doesn't comply, when you look at the context it does, you've got a garage to the north, right on boundary, it then staggers down to I think six odd metres, down to nine for the next row of dollings to the joining house at nine and a half. So again, it, it, it fits into its context. Um, one of the criticisms has been the lack of landscaping, but we've only got one crossover on the 27 metre wide frontage, which provides an ample opportunity for landscaping in the front setback. And whilst the dwellings are reverse lit, they all have ground level courtyards, which allow for ground level can canopy planting. Um, and a feature of the design too is the way it presents at the street is two rows of dwellings. So typically Murphy Grove is characterised by um, single detached houses, we've got a driveway and a setback. And as you look at the street, uh, or the ground floor footprint, you've got that joining garage to the north, a setback, uh, a house, setback, house, setback, and then the next door neighbour's house. So again, you've got that rhythm of spacing that's two storeys high, innovative design, uh, probably a little ahead of its time for this location, but um, one that works well. In terms of amenity considerations, there's been a lot of variations to this proposed throughout the process, but it's at a point now where all side and rear setbacks comply with res code. Um, the setbacks from adjoining windows all comply. Uh, the overshadowing of adjoining windows, or over, overshadowing of adjoining properties complies. Uh, overlooking complies, there's no objections to that. Uh, no walls are proposed on boundaries. And site coverage and permeability are, are fairly low as well. So, just urge your councils, it's not a conventional layout, but it is a, a unique <coughs> opportunity to develop a very, very large parcel of land to one off site. Uh, a short stroll from the train, bus stop and so forth, and we, we ask that you to c consider that. Thank you very much. You're ahead of your time, so thanks again. We now have um, three objectors who have um, nominated to speak. You have five minutes between you, so between the three of you, you've probably got about a minute and 40 uh, seconds. We have Alif, uh, uh, Claire or David or Lena. Which one of you would like to present first? Are you here this evening? Anyone? Me. Alif? Yes, please come and join us here. Are there any other speakers apart from yourself at the side? I've got three names here. Alif? Uh, this is Claire. Yep, okay. All right. Okay, so you've got two speakers, only two speakers. You've got two and a half minutes each then, okay? Thank you. Okay, um, my name is Claire Barrett. Um, I'm representing my family and a few members in the street. Um, we live at 40 Murphy Grove, directly opposite um, the opposed the site development. Um, we've lived here for almost five years, and in this time we have seen developments in our area, but they're generally freestanding developments of no more than three dwellings per site. So um, this is a double site, so it would be equivalent of six um, dwellings for the site. Um, there have been high density developments in the area, but they've been across the major roads with busy trams and a lot of traffic, not in our quite residential street. Um, we don't oppose developments personally, um, but we feel this is a gross overdevelopment of the site and not keeping in the current, um, in keeping in with the current neighbourhood character. Um, and it, we don't feel that it's an incremental development. It's a dra dramatic development in comparison to what currently exists. Um, the site of the development is not consistent with the current neighbourhood character overwhelmingly in our streets. Properties are single dwelling properties. Um, according to the plans, the unit the apartments are very small, with limited outside space which is not keeping with any of the properties. In, in addition, we understand that parking allocation for the development is inadequate, which will lead to um, vehicles using off-street parking, which will have a direct impact on a lot of roads in our area. Um, our attraction to living in Preston and Maple Grove is it's related to being a quite residential street, low density houses, with um, pretty landscapes, nice backyards, and good community feel. And we don't feel that like this development is in any way keeping with our current street. Okay, thank you for that, Claire. Um, okay, um, Lena, is that right? Yes? Well, you've got the balance of the five minutes, so what have we got? <laughs> Start again, okay, we'll give you three and a half minutes. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, I'm Lena. I've lived at 25 Murphy Grove most, most of my life. My parents are still there. They've raised six children, 12 grandchildren, and three great grandchildren at this property. The dwellings that make up Murphy Grove are just more than homes, they're places where storage and memories are shared. 
Most homes made up of the street are predominantly of interwar and single war nature. Most of the houses have a garden, which consists of large fronts and backyards. Um, not many know, people know this, but 25 and 27 Murphy Grove, the proposed site, the tennis court was initially part of the parents' property. They had gates that always remained open and people could just wander through. Um, both properties are attached to each other and because of this they still um, share the same amenities and features. Demolition of the southern wall of 25 Murphy Grove, which is my parents' place, um, will have a major impact and cause additional um, expense for my parents to refill. Another serious concern is the main entrance to the proposed development. It will run directly adjacent to two main bedrooms, a kitchen, dining, bathroom, bathroom, laundry and toilet. Um, having a car park running next to my parents' bedroom is a major concern to them. These homes were built with the intention that they would never be knocked down. The facade of these two homes are breathtaking to look at and the bluestone fences just complement both properties. The two properties are valued by the residents of the neighbourhood and to destroy one of these homes that has so much character and replace it with 12 cheaply made story dwellings that have no charm, little character, are heavily screened, there's no direct sunlight and it's just clearly outrageous. Um, why not keep the original home and build on the tennis court? There's nothing good about this proposed development. Murphy Grove is a quiet and undisturbed street and the proposed development should be considered very carefully. Overdevelopment could ruin the character of the site and the proposed development would completely overwhelm it. This proposed development would be an eyesore and would be entirely out of character for the street. It does not protect or respect the scale and proportions of the surrounding properties. The design is not appropriate for Murphy Grove and it clearly does not respect any of the features of the neighbourhood. The dwellings of the proposed development are heavily screened. There are serious overshadowing issues, no allocation for visitors, no private open space, um, lack of storage, lack of accessibility. The officer has reported that several of the dwellings of the proposed development will overheat in the summer months due to the spilly roof and will have and will have to rely on mechanical cooling. No allowance has been made for mechanical cooling on the plans. The impact of 12 air conditioners working at the same time during the summer months will increase the noise and stroke level and have a major impact on the residents. The proposed development is poorly designed and clearly an overdevelopment for this site. I urge Council to refuse this planning. The person has the right to peaceful enjoyment all their positions which include their home. The proposed development will have a dominating impact on residents of Murphy Grove and their right to a quiet enjoyment of their properties. I personally extend an invitation to the Mayor and Councillors to meet with me at my parents' property at 25 Murphy Grove so I can personally show you how the proposed development will damage and destroy my family's home of 41 years and the neighbourhood. Thank you, Lena. Your time's up. Thank you very much for that. Please resume your spot in the gallery. Okay, councillors. Um, Councillor Lee. I'm happy to move the motion for refusal. We have a recommendation there as listed. Councillor Lee has moved. Councillor McCarthy has seconded. If there's no debate or comments, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? That's carried. Ladies and gentlemen, council has refused that application. Um, the objectors um, will be notified that our council has now um, uh, refused as per the officer's recommendation and you'll receive mail uh, as to that effect. Um, the applicant will also be notified that council has refused that application. He will have 60 days to appeal to VCAT should he wishes to challenge council's decision. And subsequently, um, objectors will also be notified if that course of action is undertaken. So thank you very much for that. That notice is unanimous. Uh, that was all. Can we note that as unanimous decision there? Minutaga, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, those who have come for that item, you're welcome to leave. Please do so quietly. We'll now, now go on to the next item. Next item of consideration is our 5.2. We have the application for 17 to 19 Payward Street, Preston. Over to the officers, please. Thank you, councillors. This is an application for a medium density development at the site known as 17 to 19 Payward Street. Um, the application is for six dwellings, four of which are double storey and two uh, single storey. The two single storey dwellings are located to the rear of the site. There is a road. Uh, it traverses through through the site and this road is to be utilised for vehicular access to the development. Uh, bollards exist uh, on the northern edge of the road where it intersects with Pavement Street, but it is proposed to remove those bollards and relocate those to the northern, sorry, the southern end of that right of way. 
Um, this application was advertised in a normal fashion, attracting 17 objections from the local community. Um, I won't list all the objections, but they are listed. So I won't talk about all the objections one by one, but they are listed on page 37 of the agenda. Um, councillors, our assessment of this application is that the proposal is supportable. We are of the view that the development um, uh, response to native context um, in an appropriate manner. The first one is a setback from side boundaries. Um, the rear dwelling is a single storey. Uh, all the dwellings are provided with ground floor open space. Uh, unit one, um, we believe, has insufficient open space and we propose as a condition uh, one able to uh, require the applicant to delete uh, the ground floor laundry walk-in pantry associated with the <coughs> line to increase the open space to acceptable uh, dimensions. Uh, we recommend that the application be supported subject, subject to conditions. I might also note, councillors, there is a narrow condition 1A that fails to refer to, to the term laundry after ground floor. So that condition should read deletion of unit 1, 19 uh, ground, unit 1, 19, ground floor laundry and walk-in pantry. So the word laundry should be included in that condition 1A. Uh, as I mentioned, the proposal is that the, uh, the application should be supported subject to conditions. Thank you very much, there, Peter. Uh, we now have two speakers for this item. We have the applicant, um, uh, Vito Sanidi, if he's here. Could you please um, come to the front there and, and deliver your presentation? <coughs> your time starts uh, now. Uh, Mr Mayor and Councillors, my name is Vito Sanini from Professional Planning and as the applicant I thank you for this opportunity to provide a design appraisal for the proposed development of a six dwelling development over two allotments. Professional Planning has been able to develop a creditable site design strategy in addition to being involved in several workshops with the project team including council officers and external consultants such as traffic engineers, urban designers, landscape architects and an arborist to discuss the evolving development proposition. Through this collaborative process, we have been able to achieve a suitable design response and we are confident that the proposal has successfully addressed the council requirements as evidenced in the council planners report that a planning permit can be granted. The following sections provide discussion on fundamental areas of course 55 and highlight some of the key features of the subject site and design which are part of tonight's agenda. The subject site is irregular in shape and is comprised and is comprised of two lots, number 17 and number 19, which is separated by a right of way. The site has an enormous combined frontage of approximately 29 metres and has a total area of 1,160 square metres. The land is located within the General Residential Zone Schedule 2 and is within walking distance to various public transport networks, the Preston Market and other local amenities. There are several other developments within the surrounding area which are made up of single and double storey townhouses with building units. The right of way is shown as a road and certificate of title submitted with the application and therefore the right of way can legally be utilised in the road for the purpose of vehicular access. It is noted that the right of way will be open for other users and will not be for the sole use of the residents of the proposed dwellings. Council's Transport Management and Planning Unit has confirmed that they have no objection to the right of way being used for vehicle access. So long as the vehicle access is restricted to the southern end of the right of way by way of retaining the existing bollards in their current location. Therefore, the right of way will not become a vehicle thoroughfare. It is on Council's road register and is not specifically stated to be used for pedestrian use, however, it will remain open for pedestrian use and access. Once completed, this development will also provide landscaping and lighting alongside the right of way, which will be a great improvement towards a better, safe, and secure, secure public environment compared to the poor state in which it is presently in. 
The proposed development will only cover 50% of both sites combined and adequately provides in excess of 30% permeability, including large areas within the fronts and rear yards for significant and mature landscaping. The reduction of one visitor car space is considered suitable as the proposal includes the removal of two crossovers and the construction of one crossing in front of the right of way. This will provide a net gain of one on-street car parking space and is in line with Council's vehicle crossing policy. All car parking spaces and garages will be located be behind the front dwellings so that parking areas do not dominate the front facade. There is ample space plant in front of the garden and there are no significant areas of paving to the frontage. The dwellings have been designed to minimise bulk with first floor areas smaller than the ground floor envelopes and sufficiently set back from property title boundaries. It is also noted that the rear dwellings are single storey that appropriately address the lower scale rear yard garden character and respect the neighbours to the south with an address to grade court. There are no overshadowing impacts. There are no overlooking issues. The development provides sufficient private open space for the following reasons. The open space areas are usable and have good size and good dimensions. These areas have ample amenity and solar access. The secluded private open space areas have direct access to a living room. And there is a park directly across the road to the north, including a playground and seating areas. 20 seconds if you can sum up please. It is submitted that the proposal represents a carefully designed form of attached and detached single and double storey infield development that has a minimal interface with the budding properties. The design and information is submitted to address key aspects of the Darabin painting scheme and clause 55 of breast code. Thank you for your time. Thank you, that's uh, right on time. Can we now have uh, an objector? We've got um, one person who's uh, asked to speak. Uh, ben, if he's here, please take a seat. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Ben Hamish, and I live uh, with my partner Jody and our two boys who are 10 and 8 at 26 Paywood Street. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to voice the concerns of a number of residents in Paywood Street regarding the proposed new developments at 17 and 19 Paywood Street. Uh, you will no doubt note that the concerns are not inconsiderable uh, as 17 um, uh, opposition statements have been, uh, been submitted. As documented in our written objection to this proposal, there are a number of reasons why we are against the development as it stands in its current form. To recap for you, part of the attraction of Paywick Street for the people that live there is that it is a quiet, neighbourly and family friendly street. There have been a number of developments over the nearly 10 years that I and my family have lived there that have maintained this kind of uh, character. We have never objected to any of these developments in the past. One of the chief concerns that we have about this current proposal is that it is an overdevelopment of the site and completely at odds with the rest of the street. There are no other property or uh, sites that have three dwellings on them. Uh, the design is also problematic with air conditioning units planned to be uh, situated uh, on uh, neighbouring um, uh, on neighbours' fences rather than on, on the laneway uh, or road as it's been stated. We're alarmed that as part of this overdevelopment there is a proposal to open up one end of the laneway that is uh, currently um, only accessible to pedestrians and bike traffic. The developers wish to open this laneway up so that they can increase the number of residents on each site and also uh, uh, to garage uh, some of the cars. Um, I'd be concerned that uh, a lot of these residents uh, we possibly have more than one car and question where those uh, other cars may then have to be, uh, be parked. Uh, this is a massive issue for many of the families uh, who have chosen Paywood Street to live in. Firstly, this laneway runs directly onto Paywood Reserve, uh, which is a much loved and used park and playground area. I think the council have recognised this and have accordingly spent money on upgrading the facilities and beautifying the park over the last few years. It is not unusual to see boys and girls in the plane on the play equipment, kicking balls on the, the grass areas or riding their bikes around the park because parents know that the area is safe. This troubles me. Uh, it troubles me to think um, that there is the possibility of perhaps up to, uh, you know, possibly seven more cars being parked uh, around um, the park area. 
um, and then also vehicles entering and leaving um, that uh, the current laneway as it stands. Um, so many children use this, uh, as so many children use this space. I can't remember the number of times um, that balls run across the road in exactly the site of the new proposal, usually followed by an enthusiastic child focused on one thing only, the ball. Um, it would be a travesty for the existing safety of the area to be compromised. Furthermore, the laneway is currently not only a preferred access point for families and children from other streets to get to Pavement Reserve, but it is also used often as a thoroughfare for parents and children to go to and from school every day. Uh, as you undoubtedly are aware, there are two schools in the um, close proximity, St Raphael's and uh, Preston West Primary School. Um, I do not know the history uh, behind why this laneway was closed at both ends, uh, but it's my guess that councillors at the time realised how often children and families use this route to get to and from school. Finally, I will close in asking the planning committee to consider the needs of all of their constituents in making your decision. We've been living here, as I said, for nearly 10 years, and I question the need and the motivation uh, for this overdevelopment. The current residents, and particularly the many children of the area, uh, are due careful consideration in your deliberations. Please ensure that the reserve and its surrounds remain appropriately developed and a safe environment for the residents and children who use the park and the laneway. It would be a tragedy if the safety of our children was to be compromised by overdevelopment at this um, particular site. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Okay, over to councillors. We have a recommendation there. There's no comments or questions. And you want to move that? I'm oh, happy to move the recommendation with the addition of the word laundry in 1A condition. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Do you have a seconder? For the purpose of the debate. Councillor Cedis. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Lawrence, you wish to speak to it? Um, yes, uh, Mr Mayor. First of all, sorry, I'll uh, first ask, is there any opposition to this? Anyone wish to speak against? Councillor Lee? Yes, I will. Speak, speak against. Against. Okay. against. I'll be speaking I'm against. I'm in opposition. I don't have to speak against, but... Okay, okay, okay. Councillor Lawrence? Um, yes, uh, through you, Mr Chair. Um, the officers have gone through and assessed this uh, uh, application with the lo relevant local and state uh, planning schemes and it's been found suitable development. Um, the site itself is 1,160 square metres, as has been mentioned, and is in fact three <coughs> units per, per lot, if you'd like, and with the use of the laneway as a carriage. So, so it certainly uh, isn't um, exceeding local or, or state planning schemes. Thank That's you, all. Lawrence. You have to see this Speakers against? I'll go to Council Lee first. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. I do want to speak against it because um, I am uh, persuaded by the opposition um, that was presented by the community. Um, I think the key issue here is the use of the laneway to, to access, uh, in my opinion. Well, on the surface, it looks a, a good outcome, but when you peel it back a little bit, um, it, essentially what development <coughs> is doing is uh, making, the making the public laneway a private driveway to the developers to the exclusion of others and endangers the, um, the safety of pedestrian cyclists who use that laneway. Um, I'm particularly concerned about the lack of um, front, um, street front setback from the garage onto the proposed laneway that's now uh, on the road. Uh, that's on plan uh, 14 here. Um, I think we refused a very similar application down in Brook, Brook Avenue or Brook Street down Northcote only, uh, only a couple of weeks ago, very similar layout where they're essentially the drivers reversing out of the garages will not have sufficient line of sight to judge oncoming pedestrians and bike and cyclists come down through that laneway. And I think that's a, um, that's a uh, <coughs> fundamental safety issue that we need to consider. Uh, on that basis, I'm not prepared to Thank accept you, it. Thank you, Councillor Luke. Anyone else? Councillor Gregory? Yeah, um, I'm also speaking against uh, the, the approval of this application. Um, just to add to C Councillor Lee's um, comments, um, I, I think the central key for me is that it represents an overdevelopment. Yes, there are two lots of um, land, but if you look at the sizes of the land, um, all up, um, one is about uh, 
uh, just under 600 square metres. The other one is just uh, just over 500 square metres. So there's the two very small lots of land, and what what's trying to be crammed onto those two lots of land um, are six are six new dwellings. And I clearly think that uh, for that reason, it's an overdevelopment for for those small blocks. The other, the other issue uh, I think that needs to be taken into consideration is the um, is the setting um, the the predominant um, dwellings in that particular area are of a single st single st story dwellings and, and what's envisaged here are, are double story dwellings and notwithstanding that there are some double story dwellings but given the um, that there'll be six um, dwellings on those two two small sites I think we will adversely um, change the, the character of that uh, particular section of, of the road. So on that basis, I won't be supporting this application. Thank you, Councillor Grigger. And just briefly, Councillor Bilal, any further uh, new to add? Further to add, Mr. Mr. Mayor, but I am, um, because I the, the points that I, um, I wanted to make have already been okay. um, clearly Thank you, Councillor expressed. Thank you. Okay, just one question to the officers, um, uh, uh, Darren. The, the laneway or ro roadway, is it, a, is it an actual road on our roads register or not? It is a road on our roads register. Yes, okay, all right. Okay, having um, heard all that, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour of the recommendation? Those against? Okay, that is I have an alternate, alternate motion, motion. Mr Mayor, um, that the uh, application be refused on the following four grounds. Uh, one, inadequate front setback in relation to the laneway. Two, insufficient private open space to unit one. Three, does not respect neighbourhood character. And four, is an overdevelopment of the site. Second. Happy to second that, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we need to hand those over to the okay. taker and it would have been appropriate if that was uh, actually considered today to assist with tonight. Okay, uh, do you wish to speak to it, Councillor Lee? No, I think it's uh, self-explanatory. Okay, so move, Councillor Lee, Councillor Bellella. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? Okay, that item has been approved. So we now have an alternative recommendation. That council has now refused that application. What will happen now is that um, the applicant will be notified of council's decision. All stakeholders, object objectors, and the applicant will be given a, a right of um, appeal. Uh, should the applicant decide to go to VCAT, he will have 60 days to exercise that right. All objectors will be notified of council's decision and sub uh, subsequently will be notified if um, the applicant decides to go to VCAT. So council has now refused that application. Thank you. You can state for that those who um, are still here for others. Otherwise, um, you may leave if you're items been considered. Next item is 5.3, 52 Shells Street, Preston. Over to the officers. Uh, thank you Mr Mayor. There's uh, some well set out history in uh, this report uh, and just to clarify the application before council is to amend a set of existing plans. So there's a host of changes. Uh, this is a normal practice. A question came up last Monday's council meeting about that. Uh, that as a proposal heads towards uh, the construction process, it's not unusual for the design to be refined uh, to uh, make a few changes. Uh, I think those changes are well detailed in uh, the officer's report. And because uh, there are changes to things like balconies, there's a balcony coming uh, six millimetres closer to the main property, uh, it does trigger an advertising requirement. And as a result of the application being advertised, uh, there's been 21 objections received. Probably goes into the history that this application has been disputed with VCAT. VCAT had decided to issue a permit, so the application before you was not one to consider the merits of the three-storey apartment. Um, that uh, discussion and that consideration has been had some time ago. Uh, there is an assessment of the objections on page 56 and they're also detailed. Uh, council, in considering uh, this application, as I said, has got to really stick to what um, the actual amendments are about, and the officers report takes you through those and what can be considered. Uh, there's certainly, in the objectors' concerns, there are a number of concerns about overlooking, and it explains where they're valid and where they may not be uh, valid under the planning scheme. Uh, the application uh, is recommended for support uh, to approve the amendments to the plans uh, and to uh, <coughs> the rest of the I think those changes are well explained to me. Thank you for that, Darren. Uh, for this item, we have uh, one speaker who's asked to present. We have uh, an objector, uh, Selena Page. 
Uh, if you want to take the front, please, and um, you have five minutes. I'd like to thank the Mayor and the Committee for this opportunity to speak. My name is Celine Page and I'm the occupant of 50 Shower Street, Preston. This is the single storey residential property that adjoins 52 Shower Street to the east. This evening I'm speaking for myself, for the owner of the property and also the 19 other objectors to the current application to amend the planning permit for 52 Shower Street. Now the specific amendments we object to are the enlargement of the balcony area of apartment 9 on the third level of development and also the installation of opening windows on the third level of the development. We don't contest any of the other amendments sort. Firstly, the enlargement of the balcony. The balustrade wall of apartment 9 on the uppermost or third level of the development does not respect minimum setback requirements under clause 5541 of the Darabin Planning Scheme, standard B17 at an overall height of 7.6 metres. This balustrade wall requires a setback of 2.7 metres from the property boundary as per standard B17. The balcony as a whole is non-compliant with clause 55 and any enlargement of this balcony, however small, works to <coughs> erode an already non-compliant treatment. The current setback from the eastern boundary is actually less than half the minimum setback required under clause 55. The southern extension to the balcony proposed tonight exacerbates this non-compliant situation. The balcony does not respect the residential amenity of 50 Shower Street, particularly its rear private open areas. The balcony will already be prominently visible from the back of 50 Shower Street, and any enlargement of this balcony area will be to the further detriment of 50 Shower Street. The inadequate side boundary setback of this third level of balustrade wall results in a visual mass and bulk that provides an extremely poor transition to 50 Shower Street to the east. The lack of setback is at direct odds with neighbourhood character objectives of clause 55 of the Darwin Planning Scheme. The applicant effectively seeks to enlarge the private open space available to the future applicants of apartment number 9 at the direct expense of my existing amenity. And on this last point, I'd like it to be noted by the committee that there's actually a pattern to amending the plans for this development, which dates from as far back as 2010, when Council refused to grant a <coughs> permit. Since VCAT overturned the Council decision and granted a permit to this development in 2010, the third level of balcony in question tonight has been extended both south and east. The balcony has travelled in my direction over time. VCAT approved non-compliance has been used to piggyback further non-compliance. The balcony just gets getting bigger, it's getting closer and closer to the boundary, further south as opposed to night and further east. Bit by bit, the ultimate aim, I'm fairly sure, is zero setback. And please note in this regard that there are already five other balconies in this proposed development that are already located right on the eastern boundary. Virtually the whole boundary is occupied by balconies. So we request the council refuse this current amendment on the grounds of non-compliance with clause 55 standards and also neighbourhood character objectives. Now, secondly, um, the installation of opening windows on the third level of the proposed development. In 2011, VCAT approved this development with skylights at the third level and the architect's note on the plan submitted to VCAT in 2011 stated that the skylights or the highlight windows, as they've, as they've been called, would give adequate light and ventilation and provide privacy to the adjoining property that is my home. Opening windows are now proposed. I object to these on the grounds of noise and potential overlooking above 1.7 metres. Children would play in the private driveway area of 50 Shower Street. I'm also disturbed, however, that the justification given for the installation of these windows by the architect is to eliminate the requirement for fire sprinklers along the eastern boundary. Along with other residents of Shower Street, I don't think that this negative reason is a particularly good one. The proposed development occupies a narrow and tapering site. It's actually only 10 metres at the back. The nine individual dwellings within it are tightly packed. There's uh, minimal clearance between entrance doorways and between individual vehicles parked in the first level garage. It's an obvious fire hazard and uh, we believe 
This is the me next door that the development as a whole should be fitted with an automatic fire suppression system. The windows proposed should not be approved as they are an inadequate substitute. Thank you, Selena. Time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any questions or comments from councillors? There is a recommendation there. Or do I have an alternative? Just a quick process question. Um, given that VCAT has, amend, has approved this application, if, council, if planning committee was to not accept this amendment, would that then trigger another VCAT <coughs> process? Darren? Mr Mayor, that's uh, speculative, uh, and I'd say it would trigger a VCAT uh, appeal if <coughs> the applicant wasn't happy or the objectors weren't happy with the council's decision. Just, so just to be clear, thank you. Uh, this is effectively, a, a, I mean, it's an amendment to an existing planning permit, but it's effectively a new planning permit application in that sense. In it's actually sense under a direction of VCAT here, that we're mostly similar to what VCAT recommended already. <coughs> so, Thank you. Just, just, just another Lee? question. Because we received the notification about the windows rather late, um, would it be possible to, in the, um, in the conditions, to condition out the window, deletion of window to Unit 9 and replace it? Uh, back to a skylight or, or a highlight window as per original VCAT recommendation. I, I think the reports, Mr Mayor, is pretty clear on the, mm. the limitations and challenges around that. It's something that's been picked up by, they're obviously getting ready to, to build mm. the development, and it's something that's been picked up by the building supplier mm. assessing the, the uh, design plans. Uh, there's a bit of commentary on page 58 uh, that explains uh, what can and not do there. There certainly is a need for some change. Uh, so the office's recommendation is not just to support it as is. There's certainly some improvements to, to, that really are around uh, the privacy concerns of the premises <coughs> and ensure that that's done properly. So it's saying there that to use um, fixed obscure glazing, uh, not uh, transparency film which can deteriorate over time. And that's explained on page 58. Thanks, Darren. Okay, we have a recommendation there. Moved Councillor Cedars to a seconder. I'll second. Councillor Lawrence. Um, I may not go into the debate. I'll go straight to the debate on that. If there's no opposition, anyone speak in opposition to it? If not, I'll go straight to a vote. We have a move and a seconder. All those in favour? Those against? Okay, the vote is 4 4. I'll use my casting vote to support the officer's recommendation on that one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, Council has now moved to support the recommendation. Uh, the applicant will be advised of Council's decision. All objectors will also be notified of Council's decision. And objectors will have 21 days of uh, appeal to VCAT on Council's decision on that matter. Next item of consideration is at 5.4, uh, 943-945 Plenty Road, Kingsbury. Over the officers. Uh, Mr Mayor, this item appeared before this committee uh, on the 12th of October. 2015 and was deferred, uh, I think pending some further discussion at uh, the council level on amendment C137. The uh, application before you is unchanged. All I'll quickly point out is that uh, the application has been assessed against the speed <coughs> thread now, but also against amendment C137. Uh, uh, the application uh, complies with the height of the full story limit which has remained unchanged throughout the drafting, exhibition, panel consideration and then adoption of Amendment C137. A couple of other things that were raised as a concern on the 12th of October about the front setback are uh, dealing with a <coughs> policy framework that encourages when sites are redeveloped to redevelop to the zero lot line to bring the, the, the visual mass to the street to lessen the impacts because we've got a residential uh, interface to the back. And on that, the proposal also complies with the transitory setbacks into the residential area as proposed under Amendment C137. So I won't add to that, Mr. Lee. The recommendation remains full support and a notice of this year. Okay, thank you very much for that, Darren. We now have our two speakers who have asked to present this evening. We have um, the applicant's representative, uh, Lisa Stubbs. If you can um, take the front there, please, and <coughs> deliver your presentation. My name is Lisa Stubbs. I'm the consultants. 
Excuse me, could you put the microphone closer to you, please? Yeah, thank construction you. Construction of a four storey building containing a ground level shop premises of 81 square metres, nine dwellings, nine bicycle spaces, and nine car parking spaces. As uh, Mr. Rudd said, the proposed building has a height of four storeys or 15.05 metres. Now, the applicant isn't able to be here tonight but asked me to express his thanks and appreciation for John Limbach, who's on leave at the moment. Council's major projects planner for the report and recommendation to approve the proposal. The applicants reviewed the recommendation and supports the permit conditions in full. The land's in a commercial one zone and that encourages the provision of more intensive forms of housing, including apartments such as these. Uh, the majority of the objectives to this application uh, are surrounding commercial properties in the commercial one zone or the industrial three zone. We note for the benefit of Council that the application is exempt from notice for buildings and works from those commercial and industrial properties. The only available permit trigger to those objectives in the commercial and industrial zone is in relation to the dwelling land use and the parking waiver. And we note that Council's traffic engineers have no concerns about the car parking and vehicle access arrangements. The remaining objective for this application is at one Scott Grove to the immediate north of the site and the council plan has required the proposal increase the setback to this property to four metres by way of condition 1D. The permit applicant will comply with this requirement and the permit draft permit otherwise includes screening of north facing windows and balconies to prevent overlooking to that property. The council's now adopted the DDO for the Plenty Road Corridor in Amendment C137 includes a requirement that new development comply with a 45 degree setback profile to the rear. The proposal complies with this setback line for the adjoining residential properties and this approach has been supported by Council's planning officer in the report. The building height of four storeys also complies with the DDO 17 as adopted by Council on the 21st of September. So we thank Council for the opportunity to address you this evening and look forward to a positive outcome. Thank, thank you. you for that, Lisa. Uh, we now have a, an objector who's uh, asked to present this evening. Uh, Frank, uh, are you here? Frank? Thanks, Frank. You have five minutes uh, when, when you're ready. Councillors, thank you for your time. Um, I'll be on behalf of the Natural Rest and Natural Objectivity. Um, we actually object against this actual development quite strongly. Uh, the way that this actual development site itself has been actually designed and does encroach with the actual setback and the actual setback will obscure the rest of the shops that are right there right, right now. You actually find if you drive up and down that street by that by that dwelling it goes up by, by four floors straight up. Every four block of four shops that are there right now. So the actual road, the road traffic that goes by, sees those shops, that trade that trade those shops won't will not be seen. Uh, we do have mm -hmm. concerns right now that based on the actual car park based on the lack of car parking that's there right now, we we have insufficient train because it's not enough car parking. They plan to reduce that car park as well. Uh, part of the car park, I believe, that they're planning to reduce is the actual road zone. Now, the actual road zone there yeah, is used by all four of those shops. There, there is no place there for them to, to load or unload. Now, the actual street look and the street facade and all those buildings there is the way you see them now. has got a very nice road in street. Look, uh, the, the actual road that they intend to go up with the four floors will actually encroach on that completely. Um, <coughs> we've actually found now that the actual train that goes through now there is quite slow. The, the, the way that they plan to actually build there and actually increase the size of that building, if you pay attention to the way that that will take an actual zero setback, it will form a U shape which will block those shops off completely. Now, the fact that they're about to start to build there as well, when they do start to build there as well, uh, there's no, you can't park there now. There's only five car parks there at this time. Now, the actual paint shop, the actual bottle shop, the chip shop, and then the actual flower shop, that's right there right now, finding it quite hard to trade. So, the fact that this building and this stuff will kind of have a crash and have a setback of zero completely 
from school they shop. Now, the style of that building, now, we're not against the fact that they do want to go up four floors, but the fact that the way they look and the way that they look, they look they're going to approach, you just go up straight across, they will still all the signs of the business in those shops. Those shops will, they, those shops will not be seen at all. Now, no, we don't have an issue with the fact that they do want to go up four floors. We do have an actual issue with the lack of car park that there's right now. But the fact that, that the actual car park that will be there will be further reduced. The fact that there is a zero, a zero setback, which will crash on every single building in there. It will look like, excuse me for saying I'm with a black hole. Um, the actual shop that's right to one side will have a wall that goes up straight. Now, the fact that those shops can't be seen is it will affect those shops and the way they trade. We've already, we've already been told by a few of the people there and the actual technical my shop as well that it will break his lease because they can't trade now. So if we're trying to add to the actual area, I don't believe that's a way to add to the area. You can't park there now. There's no car park right across the road. People will not cross the road. You can't park around the block. The fact that once they start to build there as well, the tradesmen will all park in the ground. I know the second that the court that that will be short term, but that's going to go on for the first five, six months. So I don't, I don't see how we can expect these local businesses to be able to trade for six to eight months when they can't get people to come to the door at all. Um, the style of that building is not going with the actual street at all. There is nothing around there for at least three or four cuttings that looks like that would be nothing. Okay, so we don't mind that they we don't mind that they intend to go up, but the fact that they can go out of that sector can zero and every other shop that cannot, not now, not in the future. We we weren't aware that that land was up on sale, we were never told by the growers about that. Now what's been done done has been done, but the fact that that can come so far in front and block it, that's our main concern. And the fact that we will have insufficient car park and we will not go with that streetscape at all. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that, Frank. Thank you for your time. Okay, uh, Councillor. May I have an alternate motion? Councillor Grico, you have an alternate motion. Yeah, um, um, I was hoping that the motion would actually appear on the house screen, that's why I handed it in. Uh, if I can get a copy of it again, I'll read it out. Yep. Let's, hear, let's hear it, Councillor Greco. Okay. Um, the alternate motion is that Council refuse this application on the following grounds. One, build it exceeds the proposed maximum mandatory height limit as per Council's endorsed C137 amendment request. Two, inadequate loading and unloading of vehicle requirements associated with the use as a shop, three, inadequate car parking provisions, four, uh, insufficient regard to the context of the location relative to the neighbouring small scale neighbouring uh, buildings. I'm happy to second that Mr Mayor. With an additional point if I may, the site is an overdevelopment. So, uh, okay. So, okay. Overdevelopment Councillor Lee. Uh, I also would like to add to the section about uh, lack um, insufficient front uh, setback. Um, it's 12.2 as compared to 15 metres requirement. Okay, so move. Happy with that? Yep, I'm happy to incorporate those. Okay. Uh, before you speak to the um, before the mover speaks, can we just get clarification on the first point because uh, regarding the height, the, the, the reference to maximum height? Can we hear that again, Councillor Greco? Point. Yes, um, I, could, I could speak to that. Um, if I can just hear the just, just hear it again. Just hear it again first. Yeah, hear it again. Uh, that the um, that the building exceeds the proposed maximum mandatory height limit, as per council's endorsed C137 amendment request. C can we just get clarification as to whether that is? Is that correct? The correct. Um, Mr. Mayor, it, it complies with the full story limit. The heights. Uh, that's not a valid item, then I can't uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, uh, if I can. If All right, let's hear it. Then we'll, okay, we'll, we'll, let's hear it. Let's hear it. No, no, let's hear it. Let's Councillor Greco. Okay, uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, look, I'll just re quickly very go, go through those four points. One in relation to the mandatory heights. Uh, we have recently endorsed a three, uh, C137, which sets new mandatory heights. 
Uh, admittedly, we know that it has to be approved by the Minister, but that is the intent of the Council um, to go with these mandatory heights. We're no, lo we're no longer looking at discretionary heights, we're actually looking at mandatory heights. Uh, and if you look at page 172, of, uh, if you look at page 72 of this report, it actually refers to uh, how that the, the, the building, uh, the, the maximum overall height of the proposed development is 15.05 metres. And then if you look at the, um, on page uh, 93, it also talks about that the, the height of the building, um, uh, which is greater than the standard, and, and also um, if you look at page, uh, and also that the, uh, on page 87, it talks about that the, that the proposed building exceeds the indicative maximum height by uh, seven, 758, uh, uh, millimeters uh, to the centre of, of the uh, the height, it's, so it's, it's it's much it's much higher than the 14, 14 meters as a mandatory height. Now, why I'm making this point, Mr. Mayor, is that if we are going to go down the down the path of mandatory heights, that's the envelope. There should not be, as we've seen in the past with discretionary heights, where we start to you know, fudge, fudge the heights. That was the whole process of introducing mandatory heights. And we have to live within that envelope. And that's not to even talk about that um, and some of the, um, uh, uh, some of the um, things on top of the building will actually be protruding that, uh, 14, uh, that, that 14 metres. Um, the other point too is that the loading and unloading um, and requirements, um, because it is a shop, they're inadequate. It's actually here you're mentioning the, in the report on, on, um, on page 72. The other point too is that the, in relation to the car parking requirements, there is a shortfall of four car parking spots in relation to this particular application. So that, that is um, again not acceptable and not meeting the, um, uh, the council's objective, uh, council standards. And also in relation to my fourth point is that, that, it's, um, that I, I believe there is an insufficient um, regard to, to the context of the of the neighbouring um, smaller shops, um, we've heard the objector um, and talk about a lot about that, and um, and I think that that's a consideration that needs to be taken into account in terms of um, how this particular development interplays with the uh, with the existing developments are there, and um, and based on those four grounds, I, I think it should be. Um, um, Rejected, and then I also accept the grounds that have been um, <coughs> introduced by other by other councillors, and um, in, in relation to being an overdevelopment, and also the insufficient setbacks at the front of the Thank building. You, I'll stop there. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Time's up. Okay, Councillor Villala, do you want to add? Look, just very quickly, um, Mr. Mayor, I, I I think it's a really poor design. Um, because of all the, um, all the all the deficiencies, as highlighted by Councillor um, by Councillor Greco, I think uh, that the, that the idea that we waive a car parking in that commercial area, the mine boggles, and especially the loading and um, bays. I think that is just uh, those kinds of decisions will come back to bite us. Um, and I I'm kind of I think it's a. It, We've got shopping strips that cry for car parking spaces, so I, um, I, I can't understand why it would even be considered there would be a reduction in car parking space. Secondly, I think that just the visual bulk of it uh, and those setbacks to the side, to me is a reflection of trying to cram too many apartments in this small space. Um, you know, maybe something like seven units as opposed to nine, because the top two, unit eight and nine, Mr. Mayor, is you got know, 54 square metres and 53 square metres thereabouts. It's tiny. That's tiny. So we're getting shoe boxes. Um, I would say that a more creative design that takes into account the needs of the surrounding businesses, enough parking, and maybe seven units with appropriate setbacks on the side might be something that is a bit more um, palatable and in the interest of the general community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Councillor Zavala. Any further comments from councillors? I'll put that recommendation. Councillor Lawrence? Just a question. Um, I'm, I'm just struggling because I don't have the amendment in front of me. But, um, the alternative. The alternative recommendation. Um, I'm just a bit confused on the, the points that we're wanting to adhere to an indicative, indicative height of 14 metres based on the amendment, but we're wanting to reject the zero setbacks which are part of the amendment. 
So I, I'm just putting it on the table. If we could go in one logic chain and with one of those clauses, then we might have some hope. But at the moment, presents. So you're asking a question of the officer. Incoherent. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I'm not being clear. Committee before, please. Four-story is the maximum height that you can and the report suggests that 14, store, 14 metres is indicative. The amendment that's being prepared, that is about to be submitted to the Minister, in fact, uh, reflects that. Uh, and it's really to provide a guide. If something gets too outrageous with um, you know, what, what can happen if you express the maximum height in metres, people can try and make it five storeys when it's supposed to be four. So it's the four-storey component that's the mandatory, the 14 is indica indicative that that's typically what height all stories could be achieved. The zero setback, it is something council does have discretion on, but it's something that the planning scheme amendment C137 encourages. So if the officers are negotiating a proposal to redevelop a site, the starting point is to locate it at zero lot line. Okay, thanks for that. I would just make the, the point because uh, I think this is going to be a, a recurring theme, Mr. Mayor. Um, whilst I appreciate Councillor Greco's first point, it is irrelevant. It is the existing arrangements speaking in, against in place. You want to speak against? I'll note that as, as speaking against. Just to point out that, that VCAT will take into account the existing arrangements, not our intent, because at the end of the day, it has not received the Minister's support. So um, whether it does or not is not a consideration for us at this point in time because we have an existing planning application before us. And I know for certain that with regards to the uh, non-core elements that have been cited, and they are non-core elements to the planning scheme, they are strictly value judgments. I don't think VCAT will take those into account. And in that regard, uh, I, think, uh, I think basically VCAT will approve it. The point being is that transition over time, and particularly in major thoroughfares like Plenty Road, uh, is probably a big gar bigger guarantee than any other carriageway within the municipality that such scale developments will be supported. So I'll leave my comments there, Mr Mayor. Thank you for that. Any other speakers for, for or against? I might put that to a, a vote uh, for the alternative recommendation as presented by Councillor Greco. All those in favour of the alternative? Those against? Councillor Greco's motion is lost. Do we have an alternative recommendation? Well, you have um, an existing one. Move an alternative recommendation, but I don't have the recommendation in front of me. We have one in the well, report. I mean, I'm prepared to move it. Councillor Cedars has moved the recommendation report. Do we have a second for that? Uh, yeah. Councillor Walsh has seconded. I'll go straight to the vote on that. Who? All those in favour? Those against? That motion is lost. Do we have an alternative recommendation? So I'd be prepared to move um, a variation on Councillor Greco's. I didn't support point one in his recommendation. Yeah. Um, so if Councillor Greco could re read the remaining points, um, I'd be happy to move that. Um, so excluding point one about excluding height point one. and uh, the, the other points about context. I don't have it in front of me, so I'm Let's I'll read it back in here. So I'll read out the other points. The other points. Excluding point one. Excluding, okay. excluding point one. So it will read that um, point one will be uh, inadequate loading and unloading of vehicle requirements associated with the use as a shop. That's point number one. Point number two will be the inadequate um, car parking provisions. Uh, point number three. Uh, insufficient regard to the context of the location relative to the neighbouring small scale neighbouring uh, neighbouring buildings. Uh, point four uh, over, uh, that the um, development represents an overdevelopment, and point five uh, insufficient uh, fund setbacks. Uh, Councillor, just the point of that, it's I, I, I need to reword condition five because. It should read, does not demonstrate exemplary design given the site has less than the 15, minute, 15 meter minimum frontage width requirement. That's in the report. So okay, if I could have that. Yeah. That's so the fifth point. Okay, that's that's the fifth and point. second at Council Lee? Yes. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm happy, happy for Councillor Greco to move, yeah. move it if he prefers to move it. He's that's moved that. It's fine. Councillor Lee is seconded. Oh, okay. I will now put that to a vote. If I can, Councillor Cedis? Just speak in opposition and uh, make a different point. Um, I appreciate that the secondary, and I emphasise again, non-core planning elements being used as stating our position. But the problem is, 
even if we go back to the original premise of Councillor Greco's uh, original amended motion, the intent of C137 provided for the waivers. That is a matter of, of policy, not a matter of, of planning. So if, for instance, we wanted to not have waivers, either with respect to the, the downgrading of the loading capacity or with respect to on-site parking, that, be, that should have been done as a matter of a policy process at the beginning, built into the amendment before we went out to exhibition and then send it off to the Minister. We haven't done all those. So we are now straying into ad hocery. And it's noted. I'll leave it at that, Mr Mayor. Okay, thank you, Councillor Sees. I, I need, need actually uh, correct uh, what's happened there. Now, Councillor Greco, you've moved one item which has been defeated. Unfortunately, you can't move yeah, what you propose. I was going to, I was going so to someone that, else yeah. may have to. I'm happy so, to second it. Councillor Lee. Oh, I'm happy to incorporate my fifth point into the substantial points. That so you're the mover now? I can become the mover. I'm yes. happy to second it. Second it. Yeah. Okay. That's so we clear Fine. it. Up. And the fifth point. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll just, um, um, Councillor, in, in favour of in favour of the, um, the the new motion. Then I would just and I, uh, while I take on board. Councillor Cetus's point. So I think the, the issue of exemplary design to justify um, the, uh, the the variation in the context is, is important. And I think if we're while we want to be true to C137, despite it not having yet been adopted by the minister, we should also be striving for the best possible outcome in this location, given the context issues that have been conveyed. So on that basis, I'm inclined to support. Um, I was not prepared to support the height issue because I thought that was um, not substantiated. But uh, the issue of exemplary design, as outlined in um, uh, a lack of exemplary design, as outlined in uh, Councillor Lee's point, I think has merit, and I think it's worth council considering. Thank you. Council. I'll put that vote. Uh, that to a vote for a refusal based on the points moved by Council Lee, second Council Greco. All those in favour? Those against? That item is carried. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gary, that um, uh, item there has now been uh, refused by the Planning Committee. Uh, council will, uh, will notify all the parties to that matter. Um, the applicant has arrived appeal to VCAT. He will have 60 days of council's decision once he's received it. Objectors will also be notified of council's decision and subsequently the applicant decides to go to VCAT on that matter. Sorry. Thank you guys. If you wish to stay, please do so. If you want to leave, can you do so quietly so we can continue on with tonight's meeting? Yes. Next item is up 5.5, 518, the 528 High Street, Preston. Over to the officers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillors. This is an application for the Institute of Development. Six storeys in height, based on car parking. Um, the proposal in detail will incorporate 96 dwellings in total, um, 26 two bedroom dwellings, 71 bedroom dwellings. There's a numerical error up in the floor that creates yes. 71 one bedroom dwellings, but it is 70. The quantum of dwellings is still the same at 96. Um, Councillors, the overall height of this development is 20.5 metres. That excludes rooftop plan for the over. There are two retail premises proposed for ground four, uh, with areas totaling 390 square metres and 140 square metres, respectively. Um, each line is provided with a private open space in the form of a balcony that ranges between 8 square metres or, uh, sorry, 8 square metres to 58 square metres. In addition to that, there is shared open space provision, communal open space provided on the side as well. A total of 98 car parking spaces are provided, and a total of 52 um, uh, bicycle spaces is also proposed. Councillors, this application was advertised in the normal fashion, attracting uh, seven objections, including one petition. Uh, the objections uh, summarise are listed on page 111 agenda. Okay, so I might briefly talk about the proposal in its context. And it's important to realise that our current uh, policy encourages mixed use development, uh, that being residential and commercial innovation. It also encourages large scale development. And the control refers to a four storey height. That is not a mandatory height. That height is complied with as well as other uh, development control objectives. It would be exempt from notification. So because the height was exceeded, notice was given. As a result of that notice, objections have been received. Um, the development clearly creates a street wall, uh, which is encouraged. Uh, it also acknowledges the context. There is 
the residential interface to the east. So there are three residential dwellings with the rear open spaces abutting the eastern boundary of the development site. Uh, through careful design, um, the architects the architects have skipped the building back. That's been responsive to the sensitive interface. So even though the developers uh, you have a sheer section of development to, to High Street, which is encouraged, the development does step back from that sensitive interface. Further to this, which is also a very important point, is any development on a site of this scale should also acknowledge that uh, neighbours may wish to develop in a similar manner. Therefore, if there is boundary construction at the lower levels to the edges, and the balconies within a set back from, from the northern and southern boundary. What that does is it kind of dictates or encourages neighbours who are developing at a similar scale to build a boundary to the street, uh, but at the central component, step the building away. So the neighbours would have similar balconies abutting these balconies that are centrally located. And in, and in addition to that, we would encourage other developers to step back from sensitive interfaces to, to the east. Next is the building's clearly a contemporary building. Uh, the palette of external materials are uh, high quality and durable. Um, uh, in our assessment of this application, we believe that it should be supported subject to conditions. Um, we're taking it one step further, the eastern interface, we're encouraging the applicant, we're requesting the applicant to further set back uh, to comply with the, the standard uh, this development policy, which will include, um, I'll just read that out, which is quite important. The condition of approval will require the design to be amended to ensure that the rear eastern building setback complies with the diagram for the step. Uh, in, in the plan, uh, sorry, in the agenda of page 121. It basically means compliance with clause 2205 um, in that regard, in standard B, B17. So there's a minor encroachment, they're saying that should be further set back so that there is compliance there. Um, with regard to the reduction <coughs> in car parking, um, the applicants, to, to combat that, um, or to justify that, it provided an increased number of bicycle parking spaces. Uh, and given the site's proximity to uh, good public transport, the Royal Main Road, uh, it's a large site and it's uh, an area where we encourage large scale mixed use development, uh, we believe that the reduction is also justified. Council, we recommend that the application be supported subject to conditions listed in the agenda. Thank you, Peter. Okay, we now have two people requested to speak. We have the applicant's representative, uh, Chris Jackson. Uh, are you here, Chris? If you can take the front there, please, sir, and um, we'll um, hear your presentation. Okay. The clock starts now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the councillors for the time. Um, I'm Chris Jackson. I'm part owner of the uh, property in conjunction with my business partner who's also here tonight. And we also have the architect and the planner here as well. Why we like this project and, and encourage its approval is that we have an affinity with the area in Preston. Um, both of us, the two owners, have lived in either on High Street or off High Street in the past. Both my parents were born and bred in Preston. My business are in Preston. My business partner has his offices in Preston, where he employs 425 people in community care. So we have a uh, thorough understanding of the area, passion for the area, and an affinity for the area. So we've been very conscious of what we're trying to do with this building and this project to ensure that we uh, do the right thing by, by Preston. Separate to our personal involvement in the area, we believe our planners and architects have worked very closely with the council. And from meetings, and, uh, if things have happened to change or amended, we've been positive to that and believe there's been a very good work relationship to create the outcome that we have in front of you this evening. The other part in looking at this development, we believe it fits in with what Melbourne pretty clearly encourages in the type of development, and we're 
always be part of the project and make use of this and even say thank you. Thanks very much for that. I'm well ahead of time too, so mm -hmm. thanks for that short presentation. We now have um, an objector who is asked to speak. We have John DeVitos in here. John, if you could take the front there, please, sir. Thanks, John. Your time starts now. Hi, my name is John DeVitos. I represent 54 objectors as a department of fire identified to a by street person. Whilst I acknowledge that the zoning for the subject site remains high density development, uh, any new development must be in accordance with state and local planning and also uh, incorporated process including the incorporated plan 2007. <coughs> Upon review of the plans, it's considered that the proposal is not in accordance with the local and local planning policy and is unreasonable in terms of um, land use built for and floor speed 2.06 car parking on the other plan The bill form, uh, it falls under the precinct. Precinct H uh, of the Preston uh, Central Incorporated um, Plans 2000 sets a maximum height of uh, four storeys. The proposed building height of six storeys exceeds this maximum by two storeys. Breach of the maximum height is not appropriate given the existing uh, streetscape and patterns of built form as clearly demonstrated in the individuals uh, that they provide. The officer argues the proposal is satisfactory to the parcel of land. She goes on to say that, uh, that's consistent with state and local planning policy and vision for high density development. The development can't be in accordance with the local planning policy if it isn't in accordance with the Preston Centre Incorporated uh, Plan 2007, which is part of the LPPF. The land use, um, there was amendment C135 that came through which allowed residential dwellings to be incorporated as a local use. Uh, but it noted that the, res the residents should be above ground floor level. The, the proposal develop, uh, development indicates two ground floor retail spaces of 390 and 140 square metres out of a, a site area on that ground floor of 2,800 square metres. The balance proposes six dwellings and 16 car spaces and other associated amenities on the ground floor. Food retail offerings should, um, should complement the businesses that are existing in increasing. The small scale of the retail offering would not um, generate the activity desired within the precinct and would therefore not complement the existing car sale and home maker uh, businesses. I disagree with the officer's report that states that the proposed building at the rear of the ground floor um, have not been provided at the expense of the usable and adaptable retail space. The parking, the statutory parking requirements generated by the proposal. Proposed property of 136 car spaces for the dwellings and the retail activity. The de this, de this deficit of, uh, deficit of 38 <coughs> spaces will place an unreasonable demand for car spaces within High Street and surrounding residential streets. Okay. The traffic engineering assessment report suggests that additional car spaces will be accommodated within High Street but fails to locate uh, where this will occur in the form of now. Currently, it's becoming increasingly difficult to park within our own streets. A drive down Wood Street, Walter, Hubert, or Yanging Street will show that these streets are parked out by workers looking for all day car parking. If Council's attitude is that each of these new developments can forego the parking requirements, then it's inevitable that the surrounding streets will be further impacted by, this, by new residents and visitors looking for car parking after outside the weekends. High Street can only absorb so many of these new developments before this argument is extinguished. In conclusion, the proposed development of six storeys is going to set a precedent for future developments along this part of High Street. <coughs> Preston Central Incorporated Plan has many other precincts where developments of our four storeys can occur. Essentially, all other developers will be looking for the same concessions as are being provided for this proposal. The Victorian planning provision states that the objective is to uh, create balance. Uh, to balance the present and future interests of all the Tories. From the locals I've spoken to, we can't understand the point of having policies and guidelines if they're not going to be adhered to. It sends a wrong message, message to residents and developers. We depend on council and these policies to keep the environment in high regard and to be a voice for all current and future residents. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um
John. Um, we now have Councillor Bellow. Just a quick question, Mr Mayor, through you to the officers. I couldn't, uh, because the print is so fine, just get a, an indication of some of the, the, the size of the apartments, a, a typical one bedroom, two bedroom, because I know there aren't any three bedrooms. Mm. But um, <coughs> it's just that the print um, is just so fine. That to, well, I'll take you to the ground of the plan. Um, one, uh, one of the smallest apartments, well, one apartment's noted at 57 square metres, and that's a one bedroom apartment. Uh, if I turn to a two bedroom apartment, I'll go to the other levels. That's not included in the balcony? Um, I don't think that includes the balcony. <coughs> to refer to the two bedroom dwelling. 65 square metres. 57. And then the dwellings. Um, I couldn't read the five On this side, 72 square metres. Um, there's 154. But they do range in size. So we have got some that are between 50 and 55. Yes. Yeah, the one bedroom. The one bedroom. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Weller. Thank you, Darren. Uh, Councillor Lee? Uh, yes, I, I had an alternate motion which was circulated to, to councillors. Um, yes. I'll read it out. Uh, it is quite uh, extensive, so please bear with me um, that this, uh, grant, this application be refused on the following grounds. One, the proposed development is not consistent with the land use objectives outlined in the Preston Central Plan 2007. Two, the proposed development is not consistent with the build form objectives contained within the Preston <coughs> Central Plan 2007. Three, the proposal does not accord with clause 52.06 car parking of the Darabin Planning Scheme. Four, the proposal fails to satisfy the design objectives of the guidelines for higher density residential development. In particular, it fails the following elements. Element one, uh, development erroneously interprets and responds to the surrounding context and neighbourhood of the character. Element two, the height, massing and setbacks are inappropriate and neg negatively impacts the public realm and neighbouring properties. Element five, building design layout provides poor internal amenity to future occupants with, with regards to daylight access and apartment layout. Uh, element six, the communal garden spaces are poorly conceived and there is inadequate landscaping proposed to respond to the garden character of the surrounding areas. Point five, the proposal fails to satisfy the design objectives of clause 22.06 of the Darwin Planning Scheme in particularly in relation to sustainability, design materials, building height, and on-site amenities and facilities. Thank you very Happy much. Happy to second, 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 Mr. Mayor. Happy second 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 with an additional point, if I may, unless uh, lack of housing diversity. Um, is that, is that uh, being I covered? might just seek officers' recommendation on that because I, I don't think, think that's necessary. Yeah. No. Okay. Because. Um, so you have a second, Councillor Vallow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we've, we've had a, a very comp comprehensive uh, alternative right recommendation yeah. there. Uh, if there's no debate, debate or comment, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? Thank you, councillors. Uh, members of the gallery, that application has been refused by council. What will happen now is the applicant will be notified of council's decision. All objectors will be notified of council's decision as well. The applicant will have 60 days to appeal council's decision at VCAP. Subsequently, if that um, appeal is uh, considered by the applicant, you'll also be notified that um, uh, VCAT um, will be hearing uh, our alternative uh, motion of refusal. Thank you. You may leave those who have come to that item. <coughs> the next item of consideration is our 5.6 for our Falling Archer and Avenue Reservoir. Over to the officers. Five point six. Uh, keep it brief, please, Peter. Very brief, please. Um, Councillors, this is an application for a medium density development consisting of four dwellings on the site. Uh, it is Sorry, Peter. I just want to hold up. We've got people coming and going, so we might just wait for them to be seated. Minimise interruption. Change of shifts. Thanks, Peter. We can commence now. 5.6 we're doing now, members of the gallery. It is important to refer to some background for this application because uh, we're seeking a council form of opinion on the application. Uh, the application has been revised uh, 
uh, with VCAT uh, for a failure to make a decision on the application. And it's also relevant to note that a, a beef intensity development um, for four double story dwellings was refused by VCAT, uh, sorry, by Council on the 22nd of September 2014. The applicant appealed the Council's decision. The tribunal issued its decision to affirm the Council's decision and, and, and no permit was issued. Uh, in doing so, the tribunal did provide some guidance back to the applicant. Um, and it's important to refer to these items. The tribunal found its decision that the setback was inadequate and that a setback of around nine metres is required. It also noted that the issues with overlooking needs to be approved. The current application addresses this concern by finding the enforced a single story dwelling and providing a nine metre setback. The tribunal found that car parking and access, private open space, and solar access to open space provided the Brussels provisions of course of the course of the scheme. Um, so that is relevant because we we do have guidance from the tribunal about setback uh, and about external amenity impacts. Um, the tribunal found that certain aspects of the pro project were, were adequate. I mean, in assessing this application, we had to advertise this um, in the normal fashion, and as a result of that notification. Um, we received 14 objections, and the grounds of objection were listed on page 138 of the agenda. Councillors, we believe that the applicant has done sufficient, has made sufficient design changes to the project um, to obtain council support. As I mentioned, the nine minutes setback has been provided. Um, one of the dwellings is now a single story. Overly matters have been addressed um, through, through design changes. We recommend that the application is supported with conditions, but again, an opinion needs to be formed rather than a decision made. Thank you very much for that, Peter. We have um, two um, uh, two people requested to speak. We have the applicant's representative, uh, Mr. Chris McKenzie. Uh, if you can take the front there, please, sir. Your time starts now. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and councillors. Uh, as has been explained to you, this is what's known as a repeat application where uh, a relatively similar proposal came before the council and went through VCAT. Sometimes you have a situation where VCAT says we're refusing this and we're refusing it because we think it's fundamentally wrong, it needs to be completely different, go away, start again. Other times VCAT says the substance of what you're proposing, the concept is acceptable, but there are specific things that need to be done differently. Go and fix those things and bring it back to council. And the principle is, when you have that type of refusal, it targets you to make specific changes. If we then go and do those changes and do them properly as we're expected to do, we then should come back to the council and work with the officers and expect to get more support and approval. That's part of the system that we're all working with. VCAT makes problems and says certain things are acceptable, certain things must be done differently. If we do those things differently and do them properly, all the system is supposed to respect that as the direction has been given. You've been told the number one thing that we were told to fix was our front setback. <laughs> our current house is set back uh, a bit over seven and a half metres. The earlier proposal sought to come forward to six metres. VCAT said no. And in saying no, we think it should be the same seven and a half that you have now. They said no, go back to nine, because that's what one of our neighbours is. We've done that, we haven't put it with that, we've done what we were asked to do. The other thing that was raised was that the rear dwelling had a pitched roof with an attic style of the floor, which meant that there were small windows that were largely frosted. So there was a question about whether that was a really good living space having bedrooms upstairs with not a lot of light. Rather than try to come up with a different solution for a two story at the rear, we've opted to go to a single story at the rear. The reason for that, among other things, was it completely resolved that question about internal amenity. It also meant we were very similar to two proposals that have been recently approved by Council in our immediate area that are now currently being built. What we now have, it's not shown on the plans, but number 92 North Road, which comes into the middle of our site, so perpendicular. <coughs> Show you the sites. 92 North Road is one of three.
three properties on the north row that have the new boundary value on the side of this property. That, that now has a roof, four dwellings, three double storeys, and one single storey at the rear. The other pro proposal, or the other project that's under construction, is number nine Tambo, which is the property directly to the rear of our property. So immediately over the back fence, it now has three double storeys and a single storey under construction. So there's two things. One is, since VK and Dems considered this last time, things have changed where there's now more living density immediately here. We're not surrounded only by three animals. The other thing is that what is being built near us is the same concept and the same layout and the same structure as this proposal. So the idea of this being out of scale or out of speed or out of scale really has been settled that we're doing what our new proposal is on exactly the same size of us. Not about the same, exactly the same. So this proposal responds to what other people are doing. So all in all, what we have is a situation where we've been asked to do specific changes, we've done that, and your officers have said we've done it properly. In case we get asked the question, the townhouses, the three double storeys, are 114 square metres each, and the rear two bedroom is 89 square metres. So they're not small, they're not tiny, they're not too tight. They're proper, usual suburban townhouses with a full size private open space yard, good access to the sun. All the other open space yards um, exceed the beam and they're not designed to be right and forty. They are designed to fit the side of the water comfortably clear of those minimum benchmarks. I commend the officer who brought to you the hour of doing this the second time we've been Thank you, Chris. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, we now have uh, an objector who has requested to speak. We have uh, Helen Whelan. Uh, are you here? Please take the front, Helen. And just you, you're speaking just yourself? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, you have five minutes. Thank you. And I also have with me, I'm Helen Whelan, and I have Sam Henneke with me as well as the resident. First of all, thank you for affording me the time to readdress this application on behalf of all neighbours and objectives. As it's been stated, this is the second application. <coughs> Last year, the Council voted a resounding no to this application of four townhouses. This matter then went to VCAT this March, and may I say, at a significant cost to all neighbours and objectives. At that VCAT hearing, after discussions were done, the VCAT member came out and viewed the site. She then gave her decision, which was a resounding no. She then came back and said that she thought that three townhouses would be more than appropriate to the site. And may also mention that at this planning meeting 12 months ago, you, the councillors, also said that three would be more appropriate to the site. This is an average block of land of around 725 square metres. It's not a redevelopment site of four houses. For example, directly across the road at number 13, Aperon Avenue, there's a planning application permit there now, and they're advertising for a dual occupancy. They're at least considering neighbours in the area. Is it not now time that the council give more thought to approving these applications? This, the area surrounding this application is saturated and no thought is given to the long-term residents. Why should us long-term residents be pushed out of our homes? As it is stated by some of you councillors on your web pages, you want to ensure that the voices of residents are always heard. And your pledge is to help residents and work for what matters <coughs> most for a better community. My mother and many of the neighbours have lived here for many, many years. Developers, on the other hand, will come in, do what they want, all for the dollar, and then leave the mess created by them for everyone else. I urge you to support the people who do care, the people who call this their home. I think it's time now to try and support some of our local residents. Thank you. Thank you for that, Colin. Uh, okay, over to the uh, councillors. Oh, Mr. Mayor, if there are no questions, I have an alternative um, uh, recommendation. 
Councillor Lloyd, can we hear it, please? Is it a Councillor Lee? Is it an alternative recommendation or just an opinion? It's an opinion. opinion. Yeah. An alternative um, yeah. motion. Yeah. Motion. Okay. So it's motion. motion. Is that okay? Yeah. yeah. Councillor Lloyd. Um, <laughs> all right. So that uh, the proposal does not comply with the design standards <coughs> for car parking in Clause 52. 06 of the Darabin planning scheme given the following are inappropriately dimensioned carports and internal uh, vehicle vehicular access um, that uh, the proposal is inconsistent with the neighborhood character of the area and also that the development is the development that over the, the site is an overdevelopment um, size and bulk are not consistent with scale and context of surrounding area do you have a second? Just to be clear, is that the last point was that the, the application is an overdevelopment of the site? Yeah. Yep. Have a seconder? Happy to second it. Oh, I'm happy to second it, Mr Mayor. Councillor McCarthy. Oh. Okay. Uh, any debate or comments? If there's not, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? Okay, we have a tie there. I'll use my casting vote to vote against the alternative uh, motion by Councillor Villala. Do we have an alternative recommendation? I'll put the motion, Mr. Mayor. Put the motion it. as is listed yep. in the agenda. We have a seconder. I'll second the motion. Second the Councillor Lawrence. Mr. Mayor, if we can just quickly, the resolution that we have before us in terms of forming an opinion is one by way of, uh, I suppose, a tentative negotiated outcome between the parties. And in keeping with the spirit of uh, previous um, resolutions that have come before us in terms of forming an opinion in that circumstance has always been to support it given the futility of opposition. And I, I, mean, I should stress that uh, in order for us to knock this out, it would be to then precipitate an outcome at VCAT probably much worse than what's here before us. So it's a bit of a cautionary tale in terms of, uh, I suppose, to use an analogy, double jeopardy. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Uh, seconder? Nothing to add. Speakers against? I'd like to speak against it, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think uh, we've been, I've been fairly consistent, and a number of councillors have here, in, in relation to the number of dwellings on, a, on a, a block of land this size. Three seems to be reasonable. Uh, three seems to be a number that the community also um, acknowledges as reasonable. Um, and a combination of double storey and single storey, I think, is complementary to the most surrounding areas in this in this particular um, area. Anyway, four is an overdevelopment, I think. With and you've got the three double storey, one single, and then you've got two um, of the the double storey that are more or less attached. So there is that visual bulk situation happening. Um, I think, and it's a community standard as well. The three is reasonable, four I think is just being a little bit greedy. So I can't support the, um, the, the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you for that, Councillor Villala. Oh, I might just go straight to the vote on that. All those in favour? Those against? We have a split tie, 4-4. Four, four. I'll use my casting vote to support the uh, officer's opinion that this application be supported. Uh, I'll now uh, explain to the gallery, councillors, um, uh, Council will now advise the applicant of, and VCAT, more so VCAT, of our decision to support the application and objectors will be notified as well of Council's decision. Mr Mayor, I call a division. Beg your pardon? I call a division. Call a division. Those all in support of the application, please stand. I name Councillor Walsh, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Fontana, Councillor Cedars. Those against, please stand. I name Thank you. I name Councillor Valoa, Councillor Greco, Councillor Lee and Councillor McCarthy. And please note Councillor Fontana is using his casting vote to support the officer's recommendation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Next item for consideration. If you want to stay, please do so, otherwise please leave. Next item of consideration is item 5.7, 1 Massey Avenue Reservoir. Over to the officers, thanks. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this application seeks approval to develop three double storey dwellings that will each contain three uh, bedrooms and two cars, uh, car parks each. Uh, on note for this application, uh, it does exist in an area where previously there was a single dwelling covenant. And that uh, covenant has been removed through the Supreme Court. Probably the benefit of the gallery with Mr. Mayor, 
uh, these types of applications exclude any participation of counsel. So it's a civil proceeding, and uh, I am aware there were submissions made uh, by residents in relation to the removal of the covenant, but uh, they were not joined parties. And uh, this afternoon, Mr Mayor circulated the uh, hearing uh, determination from the Supreme Court. Uh, so what the Supreme Court have done is they've issued uh, a finding and an order that allows that single dwelling covenant to be removed and replaced with one uh, limiting the land to no more than three dwellings. The application of the you is consistent with that. So just to recap, what happens in the Supreme Court is not a process that Council participates in. Our time or Council's time is now when the planning application is lodged. These matters are a civil proceeding. Uh, the site itself is actually quite a large site, it's 872 square metres. It is on the corner of Royal First Avenue, Mr Mayor. In the summary, it should say Massey Avenue. My apologies, uh, it reads from the Coast Street. Uh, the application has been advertised, there have been five objections received. These are summarised on pages 161 through 163 of the officer's report. Uh, I suppose I didn't point out any conditions of approval uh, with the application being recommended for support is that there is a requirement to change uh, the ground force to the private open space. It is under size in standard and that condition uh, will require that to meet the standard. And that's achieved because the uh, floor plate for that particular dwelling is quite large and there's certainly the room to make that change without compromising the ground. So the recommendation for you is to support the application with a notice of decision being issued. That's the decision. Thank you. Thank you very much, Darren. Now we have uh, one person who's asked to speak. Um, we have um, one objector. We have uh, Anthony Riccardi. Uh, please take the seat over here, sir. <coughs> I'm the objector. Yeah, that's right. You're the objector. No one else. No, you're the only person who's asked to speak. The objector. Yes. <coughs> My name is Anthony Riccardi, and I live in Bullis Avenue, and I've been there for the past 35 years. Um, I, many of the residents and the owners of, in the vicinity of the proposed project and myself strongly objected to this project for a number of reasons. They've been included in the petition, and in the petition there were a lot more than just five objectors, the whole list of them. My neighbours and I live in a small stretch of Broadest Avenue, which includes at present eight houses and seven units. On the eastern side of the small stretch of Broadest Avenue, there's Banbury Road, which turns into Massey Avenue, and on the west is Godley Street, which faces Lakeside Avenue. To and from Lakeside Avenue, there's a constant stream of trucks and semi-trailers in front of our place that service an, an industrial area that begins just behind the houses of Broadest Avenue, that goes all the way to Banbury Road, uh, Edward Street, and um, Bradford Road. This vast area uses Lakeside Avenue and our small bit of Broadest Avenue as a thoroughfare to either go towards Massey Avenue and to Sydney Road and the freeway or Banbury Road to go into the city. I've been here for 35 years and this constant flow and full bottleneck has, has been constant detrimental to us, the dust, the noise, and also trying to maneuver through these, these uh, semi gardens and so forth. Often we risk actually putting our, our vehicles on, on the street because of damage and we all have damage to some degree. Now the proposed the proposal of three more townhouses with three extra driveways on Broadest Avenue as opposed to the single one on Massey Avenue. That means three extra cars at least, extra cars in terms of visitors. What is already an, an issue for us will be an even bigger issue. The thing is, any place else in Broadest Avenue, this proposal would be fine. The project would be excellent. But in this small strip of Broadest Avenue, with its unique problems because of the, the, the uh, industrial area, because of the use of our little bit of the street as a thoroughfare, because of its connection to the roads as main areas for these vehicles to go, to go by, it presents an enormous problem for us, and I've seen this for the past 35 years, but ironically, it will be a problem for the very people who will be living in those townhouses, because they'll have to put up with the same things we have. The other consideration is regarding the, uh, the idea of having double story uh, townhouses. Many of us who built our house in the 80s and early, earlier, we, were under the, under, we had the understanding that it would be a, a single story area. <coughs> and 
For now, for those laws to have been changed, and I sent a petition to the Supreme Court, and obviously it wasn't taken into account, uh, the, for that to be now changed, for these things to be, uh, to be overshadowing our, our, our homes, our street, and more so the fear for many of the neighbors I've spoken to is a fear that our property value will go down, and in terms of reselling our properties, at some stage we want to do so. We believe that this project will impact negatively on our houses, on our street, and the quality of our lives, and this is why we object to it. Um, so thank you for your time. Thank you very much for that, Anthony. Okay. Over to councillors. We do have a recommendation there. Any questions? If not, there's a recommendation. Councillor Lee um, moves the recommendation. We have a seconder. I'm happy to second it, Mr. Mayor. Second, Councillor Villella. Do people wish to speak to this matter? No, it's pretty if straightforward. Not. I do, Mr. Mayor, if I may, because um, I feel uh, I, I need, I should, uh, being that it's in my in my ward. Um, I do uh, acknowledge um, the objector's comments regarding the traffic congestion around this area. I'm very familiar with it myself, um, living not too far away. Uh, and I think those traffic congestion issues are, are real. Um, however, when you, when you look at the actual development, um, it could be a lot worse. And when you look at it in terms of the quality, there's, there's three dwellings as opposed to four or more. And I think that's to be welcomed in that area. I think the fact that each, it's a, it's a corner block, it is a significant block. Um, at the moment, it's a derelict um, space with the grass overgrowing, and it's a, a safety issue. Um, so, but uh, the the other the fact that it's also that each dwelling has a, has a street frontage, I think, is also a positive. So you don't have that visual bulk of um, of just the one driveway, and and so you, and so it opens up that whole um, living area. I think it's a it's a nicer design. So overall, I think um, I think I think it's it's a good outcome, uh, and I, I but I still do want to acknowledge the concerns made by the resident, and there might be something else that we need to look at in terms of some kind of traffic management issue for that area overall, which is separate to the, a planning issue that we're looking at tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor, and I'll make a couple of comments. It's very rare that we actually receive a. a, a um, an item like this where the Supreme mm. Court has pretty much made the decision for us. Yeah. It's, uh, mm. it's yeah. pretty much out of our hands. It's just following a, a process where we actually need to assess it, being a statutory authority. Okay, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? That item is carried. Oh, that, I'd like to have it noted. I wasn't permitted to speak to Mr Chair. Okay, we'll note that Council Owens was not allowed to speak. I didn't see it. So anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, members of the gallery, uh, that no, item no, has been um, uh, supported by Council. Uh, notice of decision will be um, issued to the applicant. Objectors will be notified uh, of Council's decision. They'll have 21 days of appeal to uh, be cut on that matter. The applicant will also be advised of Council's decision. Next item of consideration is uh, item 5.8, 34 North Road, Reservoir. Over to the officers, thank you. Thank you, councillors. This is an application for a medium density development uh, consisting of four double story dwellings and one single story dwelling. Um, one vehicle access is proposed uh, for the site. Um, and ground for all that space. Councillors, as a result of formal notification, five objections have been received the application. The grant of objection summarised. Page 178 of the agenda. Um, our assessment of this application is uh, done since adequately within the North Native context. Um, adequate open space has been provided. The, the, the car park division uh, is adequate um, and the development is supportable uh, for those reasons. There's one particular change that we do require. Uh, it's worthy of note, it's condition 1A, the reduction in the size of the study spaces as well as 2 meters by 1.5 metres. Um, our concern there is that the larger space could be used as, a, as an additional bedroom which could have an impact on the car park. Um, 
And this week, the rate of meetings for this application for conditions. Thank you very much for that, Peter. Uh, we have uh, two people who have requested to speak. Uh, we have the applicant's representative and also an objector. We have um, David Di Giovanni, the applicant's representative. Thank you, David. You have uh, five minutes. Thanks, councillors. Councillors, can I start by taking you to the aerial photograph um, in your reports, please? Have you noticed um, it's a triangular, where North Road meets Bolton Bolton, there's a triangular subdivision pattern. Can you follow that? Yes, we can. And you'll notice that where the subject's land is, where the, the last of that triangular portion of the land. So effectively where the largest site, as they progressively get higher and higher, and where the largest of the sites in the area. We're 907 square metres. <coughs> and then to our left, I'm um, saying so going to Boulder, you'll notice at 44 Boulder, there's a four unit site there. Four dollars constructed on a much smaller site than ours. So the point of this exercise is to highlight that from a density point of view, uh, our site being the largest site in the area at 907 square metres and with a wide frontage of 17 metres can comfortably accommodate this density of five two bedroom fairly compact dwellings. Some of the features of the site as well as the site area of 907 square metres of wide frontage is just the locational attributes. So the Garabin planning scheme is specifically encouraging uh, development in this location. These are some of the features. We have a bus stop, not down the road in another street, it's literally on our doorstep, it's outside the site of the bus stop. It's going to be moved slightly, the public transport Victoria support remaining on our site frontage. On top of that, we're 370 metres walk, so a short stroll from Plenty Road Tram, and we're about 400 metres from the Summer Hill Village shopping precinct. So two supermarkets, and a target on our other steps and other shops. So policy for obvious reasons is saying this is where you need to provide development. Now, the development that you're, you have before you, councillors, isn't a pushing the boundaries. It's not overly ambitious. And we can see that for a number of reasons. In the officer report, there's an assessment against rest code. Now, rest code comprises 34 standards, 34 requirements. Every single one of those standards is met. We're not trying to push certain boundaries or, or, or cut corners. Every standard is comfortably met. It's not, it's not a tight, it's not a tight development. We're not reverse living. We're not relying on companies. <coughs> our open space, just to highlight how comfortable this works, our open space is, is meant to be 40 square metres on the west coast. Unit one provides 99 square metres, including the front yard. The units two, three, four, and five provide 49, 49, and 50 square metres. Now, quite often for two bedders, you can argue. 30, 35 square metres, we're going well, well, well beyond what you provide for four or four or five bedroom house. Why? Because we've got the space. Uh, our courtyards are deep. Units two and five are over four metres wide. Rest code says they need to be three metres wide. The, the wider courtyard allows you to provide canopy vegetation. Why can we provide that? Because we've got the space. We're not, we're not pushing the boundaries. There's good separation between the dwellings. If I could take you to the upstairs footprint, there's a, a relevant point to highlight just in terms of the design and how it responds to its context. So just the upstairs. And you'll notice that there's two sections of first floor at the, at the front. There's a then a wide gap. In the middle, there's two first floor windows. Upstairs footprints are in line with adjoining buildings. And then at the rear of the site where it's sensitive, where we've got adjoining courtyards to the uh, south and to the west, that's where we've got a single story dwelling. Now, why have we got that single story dwelling there? Because again, we're not pushing the development. Not only that, the first floor footprint of the, the last first, first floor element is 14 odd, well, 14 odd metres back, opposite the courtyard. So it's a very, very uh, responsive design. It doesn't overshadow, it doesn't overlook. It's energy efficient, provides good quality courtyards. Future occupants will have uh, access to natural daylight, sunlight, and so forth. Now, the most contentious aspects of this proposal is that of car parking. And we provide all the resident parking on site, but we're asking for a waiver of one visitor space, just the one. Now, I'd like to spend my last minute or so just talking about this point, Council, so because you can be assured that it's not an over, it's not an over the top request. And I'll say that for a few, few reasons. Firstly, you notice on the ground floor, we're just proposing one vehicle crossover. There's not two, just one. On a 17 metre frontage, think about the 17 metre frontage, three metre crossover gives us 14 metres. The planning scheme says a car space is 5 metres long, 2.6 by 4, so 5 metres long. 5, 10, 15 metres is 3 spaces. We're just short of providing 3 spaces. 
in our front. So we can provide two car spaces absolutely comfortably on our site front. You're not relying on parking anybody else's. We've got a bus stop literally on our site frontage. Trams 370 metres away. We engaged a private consulting engineer. He supported the waiver. Your own council's engineers, they support the waiver. If there is a location you're going to support a waiver, this has to be in council. It's as good a location as you get. We've worked with your officers, all your internal departments, and ask that you please. Thank you very much. Time's up. Okay, we now have a request from um, an objector to uh, speak with Adrian. Uh, Adrian, if you can take the front, please, sir. You have um, five minutes. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I speak in more layman terms because I'm not very well educated. This is an overdevelopment. You're putting five units. You're meant to have three parking spots on the premises. The man is asking for it to be parked outside. That's fair enough. There's a bus stop that's going to be moved. That's going to take the parking spot from next door. Out the front of the house, well, you've got to be one metre from the thing, so there's only two parking spots. You're going to have 10 rubbish bins every Wednesday on the major street. Next door, you'll have six. There's technically seven parking spots there. You're going to take two away by moving the bus and provide less. Now, we're going to have one, two, three properties have 10 houses already. This will make 15. With all visitors parking in the street, this is right near the corner. Technically, by law, the council has booked me for parking in a legal spot where I can park on the right side of the no standing zone, but the line on the road says I'm booked. That line goes right down. There is only one spot from each corner to this street. When you move that bus stop, you lose the first one out of front of uh, 44 a 34 a That's what's gone. The bus is taken out. There is no way for a garbage track and a bus to really get through the park car at all. Any park car will probably be booked by the council for obstructing their vehicles. Now, I have been booked in this position. I work for these premises. And I was used to pay the fine that went further and I had to do a day community work pay because there's two different laws. One of the signs says, I can park here. There's a line that says, here, the council says, no. Road traffic authorities, cancel. Maybe the bus stop doesn't help because you're still going to have every visitor from minute 34, <coughs> if they have one visitor, there's three parking spots. At minute 30, there's two houses. They're going to have parking spots. The next premises has three premises. They've got parking spots. Across the road directly, two premises that have been sold, corner block and another block, to one developer. So pretty soon, we're going to have more requests for off street parking. And then unit 32 has three units on it. It's a two bedroom, the original house, and a three bedroom built in the backyard. There is plenty of room. Now, if they have so much room of outdoor space, why can't they put their cars in that space? Being generous with giving people more outdoor space is great, but we're taking that out off the road for those people. Secondly, in this corner, there is a bus stop each opposite each other. And as soon as you turn this corner, with the congestion of the car, only one bus can get through. You're going to have garbage trucks, buses, and parked cars, and visitors. This is a very busy corner because it goes down into the heart of that back district. We might have all the public transport we know around, but let's be realistic. Two bedroom units are shared units. They have two cars. So we're going to have 10 people with a car. We're going to have one each and one out at the front. There is no parking. There is no garden. And then the council sends people up to also potentially be booked, have accidents, cause traffic jams at the end of this street. If you follow the bus route around to Winter Crescent, you would develop the corner there, there's a traffic jam at the end of that, where the bus comes out, there's three units, there's two units, and it's always jammed and the bus is slow to get through. And over development, that's plain and simple. If you want families around the area, bring families in. Two bedroom units are just more cars, less family. And we want more people live together. So whenever you provide parking spots, there's not going to be enough in the street. And as far as I remember from the 50s and 60s, councils had to get cars off the road to stop the congestion. 
And what we're doing right now is we're slowing the buses down, let them make out their own goddamn lanes, we're slowing all the traffic down by putting more cars in the street. We might do better, why can't we put a car park under it? The land is big. And then almost quickly, unit number 32, the two in front, or the front unit, has the capability of being pulled down and put the two more units, and then we'll need cross street parking as well. There's several factors to look at and sort of congestion. I think you've got the risk with it. You know the better words than me. Have a think about it. All right, thank you. Thanks, Adrian. I'll now go over to the councillors. Any questions? Councillor Bellotta? I'll have an alternate um, uh, motion, Mr Nair. Can we hear it, Councillor? Yes. Um, the alternate motion is that the, that the, that, sorry, that the application be refused on the following grounds, that the proposal fails to provide one visitor car parking space in accordance with clause 52065. Um, of the uh, Darabin planning scheme, that the uh, app that the uh, the site is, that that the application is an overdevelopment of the site. Um, yeah, on those two grounds, Mr. Mayor. Happy to second. I've got a question, question actually. Question, Councillor Walsh. Um, yeah, is um, is it possible to um, um, to look up to perhaps um, and maybe I need some wording, but to um. You know, um, I, I'd be interested in approving it without, um, maybe without the um, car car parking waiver. But point of order, Mr. Mayor, we've got a, a motion that's on the table. We need to resolve the motion, and then we can consider alternatives. I'll do that. So we have a, a recommendation oh, second refusal. Yeah. Uh, second, Councillor Greco. Um, point two is at the. It's an overdevelopment. Over yes, overdevelopment. So two points: car parking reduction, reduction in car parking, and overdevelopment site. More specific to relevant clauses and the compliance summary. I think they're going to be very critical with this one, councillors. Very critical. Council development. Do you want to speak? Yes, I do want to speak, Mr. Mayor. Um, the parking is a straightforward one. The overdevelopment. I just note that uh, one of the previous applications, there were three dwellings. On, uh, on 872 square metre block. And here we've got five dwellings on a 920 square metre block. So I, I, I think it stands to reason that on that, those numbers alone, we've got five dwellings, four of which are double storey. Um, to me, it's, a, it's an overdevelopment of the site. It's not in keeping with, with what else is in the neighbourhood. I don't see, looking from the, the aerial shot, I don't see any blocks of that size that have got five dwellings on it um, and four of which are double story. It just, so I don't see it unless I'm blind, uh, but that size block or equivalent to have five dwellings um, and it's, it's actually, it may be long but it's actually quite narrow. So I, I have to say, Mr. Mayor, um, to be, and we've seen it before, uh, applications have gone to VCAP where they want four or so, and then, you know, we get the three that we want. Um, so that three, four divide is not as clear cut. I think three is reasonable. I think um, beyond three, uh, it's an overdevelopment, and there's no, and at, at, uh, at VCAP we've won a few of these. So there's no hard and fast rule, and I think um, if this if, if this one doesn't get challenged, it will set a very uh, um, unwelcome precedent. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Mr. Gregor. Yeah, oh, just just to add to uh, Councillor Bernella's comments, um, um, the, the 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 property where the development is um, being proposed, uh, it is marginally different to the neighbouring property, but the neighbouring property only has. Uh, only has three dwellings yeah. on it, so it's only a marginal difference. And Councillor Bellello referred to the uh, to the uh, previous application where there was a, a civil matter with the Supreme Court, where the Supreme Court said three dwellings on <coughs> almost almost the same size, you know, slightly smaller. And the other point that needs to be made that that in relation to the, to the decision of the Supreme Court, that was a corner block. This is not a corner block, mm. and uh, and here we're looking. It, it's really, it, it, it's really pushing the boundary on trying to get uh, more and more dwellings on properties where it's clearly unsuited on many grounds. Thank you, Councillor Greco. Councillor Lawrence. I speak in opposition of the Councillor Lawrence. 
Um, yes, look, um, the, the issue of car spacing and the um, traffic in the area is, is obviously an issue, but in terms of planning, we actually have to follow the planning scheme here. Now, people made mention of the three unit site. Council's just approved that and it had 18 metre square secluded open space in it. And I think you need to go back and assess the actual officer's report. So it's not just the number of units or even whether it's a corner block or not or the size of the units, it's actually how the skill of the layout to create the, the amenity. Now, the third, Massey Avenue, obviously I voted against it because it breached three of our clauses. This development does not breach any of the planning clauses, aside from obviously the car parking deficiency. So if we're going to go into VCAT, we need to have a little bit more than a visitor car space as a fault. And I'd, I'll be happy to go and help the residents at one Massey at VCAT and explain exactly the three deficiencies and clauses that were ignored by the ward councillors. Okay, uh, if there's no further comment, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Alternative. Favour of? Yeah. Right. The All those in favour of the alternative recommendations proposed by Councillor Villella? Those against? Okay. That item has been refused by the Planning Committee. What happens now, uh, members of the gallery, the uh, applicant will be notified of Council's refusal. He will have. Uh, 60 days to appeal council's um, decision. Members of uh, the gallery, uh, those objectors will also be notified of council's decision that uh, it has been refused. Mr. Baker, I call a division, please. Yes, you may call a division. All those in favour of the recommendation, please stand up. Of the alternative. Of the alternative oh, recommendation. I name Councillor Lee, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Cedars, Councillor Villella, Councillor Greco. All those against. <laughs> Councillor Walsh, Councillor Lawrence, Councillor Fontana. Next item of consideration, members of the gallery and councillors, is on 5.9. We have 23 Bailey Avenue, Preston. Over the offices. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This application seeks approval to develop a single story dwelling. The rearmost uh, dwelling is single story. Uh, the front floor, two story. All dwellings include two bedrooms and a car space is provided for each dwelling with five and a single <coughs> total. This is also a way of the visitor parking, Mr. Mayor. All dwellings uh, have uh, provided conventional ground floor open space. There's no reliance on uh, reverse living. The subject land is an area of 848 square metres. It is set in context where there is a plan for the meeting this to now. Uh, Mr. Mayor, there's already a number of sites smaller than this that have five units on it nearby. Uh, the application has been advertised. There have been 16 objections received. These are summarised and responded to on pages 196 of the opposite report. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, there are a few conditions. I'm happy to answer questions around that. Uh, they are there simply to bring minor elements of non-compliance or compliance from the standards. Apart from those, there's a high uh, level of compliance in the application before you is recommended for support subject to conditions. Thank you very much for that, Darren. We have uh, two people requested to speak. We have the applicant's representative, uh, David G Giovanni. Please take the chair at the front there. You have uh, five minutes. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, councillors. Um, just uh, going on with the discussion we've had on previous cases, and particularly for Massey Avenue, um, this is a street where there are examples of five unit developments. There's one at number 18 Bailey, and also one at 20 Bailey Avenue. So we have a, a, a pattern of development of this intensity. Um, Whilst I know, going back to the Bassey Avenue case, that's a site in Reservoir. Uh, we, we can't compare a site in Reservoir, we, and that was at three four bedroom dwellings in Massey Avenue. We cannot compare that to five two bedroom dwellings in Preston next to a tram routes for, uh, and, and other services. And uh, we need to consider each context. And we say that again, that this is a site that contextually like, fits well into its location and is an area where your planning scheme says we should locate developments. I'm going back to the ground floor 
floor plan. Again, we provide a setback that works, uh, car parking that works, a ground level courtyards that are all generous. Um, there's no overshadowing and no overlooking of, of, of having significant notes to adjoining properties, good opportunities for landscaping and good internal amenity. Um, as with the earlier scheme, this one also ticks every single provision of rest code bar one, being standard uh, being point 28 uh, or B28. And if I can take you back to the officer recommendation, <coughs> Commission 1D seeks to rectify that one deficiency by requiring that um, the dwelling fire provide 40 square metres and we are not contesting that. So we're, we're happy to provide that. So ultimately, if this uh, recommendation is followed, we have a development whereby uh, every single standard of res code is satisfied. Um, again, we have a single storey dwelling at the rear, to position at the rear to not impact on the amenity of adjoining properties. Uh, our first floor side setbacks uh, effectively double what are required by res code. Um, we have pitch roofs, porches of a form um, that matches that of adjoining properties. Our side setback is setback, the dwelling one is set back from both side boundaries, so when you drive down the street, it looks like a single dwelling. Um, so a very good response to the character of this particular area. We're providing two bedroom dwellings uh, for, for which there is a strong demand. So the planning scheme says we need to provide more of this housing in, in this location. Um, again, we're seeking what the waiver of one visit a car space and that uh, again we have one vehicle crossover proposed in response to that. Uh, a very wide site front where you can comfortably accommodate one or two cars on our site front, not the line with anybody else's, plus we're walking distance to a bus, tram and other services. Um, your own engineers have assessed it and they've determined that there's no problem with the waiver of this one car space. Um, and um, again we've tried to work with council officers on this and ask that council uh, supported. I know council was you've had some hesitation tonight with the waiver of one of, of, of the cars, the visitor car spaces. It's a subject that's regular coming up before VCAT and the experience I'm having, I'm sure the other uh, players in the, in the gallery can confirm this, is that whilst VCAT may have hesitation with waiving resident parking, typically for the waiver of, of a visitor space it's, it's generally accepted as an a, acceptable response of one space where it can park in the site from here. So mm -hmm. it's common ground that's an acceptable outcome. So we ask that you please uh, take on board the recommendations of your own engineers and your, your players and uh, acknowledge your hard work. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we now have um, one objector who's requested to speak. We have uh, Sula Constantinopoulos. Uh, are you here? Thank you. Please take the phone. Thanks, Sula. You have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you all the councillors for the opportunity to speak with me after the 2016 objectives, particularly the owners of 25 and 11 in Boston. My objection relates to the open market of the site and the natural application of the new requirements of the open character of the homes. Um, the proposed development is too dense and severely compromises the characteristics of the existing neighbourhood and several other countries that would prefer to make the residents. Inadequate provision in terms of large trees, which currently exist around the surrounding area. 
Um, the old, sorry, the parking's not adequate. Two bedroom dwellings do require a room, two parks, park, parking spots. Not enough. One's not enough. And surely we cannot remove the one visitor car park. I did provide a slide of what a street hall looks like in terms of the parking, um, the number of vehicles that are currently there on off site. Um, and clearly it can't be sustained any further than what's there at the moment. Um, the proposal is clearly out of character. It doesn't accommodate the parking. Effectively, we're looking at a good 10 parking spots that are required. A two bedroom accommodation does require um, two vehicles. The, the area is not anywhere near public amenities that the public would require and to utilise. Um, for example, to access the tram is 1.1 kilometres away. To access the nearest Food store, Lewis, is 1.1 kilometres away. Um, the train station is 1.7 kilometres away. So surely people need vehicles and, and the residents there use the vehicles to access all these services. So I don't know how, how it's going to be um, carried out with only one vehicle per dwelling. Um, <coughs> it's also a major safety issue because there's a number of vehicles on that street at the moment parked at the site. Um, very difficult to manoeuvre across those to access the own um, property. Um, certainly a major issue there. Um, the buildings will appear fairly bulky and don't have the streetscape. Um, it's not in character with the current neighbourhood, um, and that's a real issue. Um, also, the vehicles that run along the driveway poses an issue in terms of they won't be able to. Undertake a U turn, um, and that can provide an issue in terms of how they actually move out of that driveway. Um, there's not enough private secluded um, private open spaces again in terms of keeping the character. And the shaving of the property is too much. The kitchen, dining, dining room area, the three pipe down the avenue, is that actually makes you cover all the natural sunlight currently getting in these areas in the winter. But you can see none at all, so it's going to affect the standard of living that my parents in 25 bar years are currently. Um, um, the bins are a major issue. Where do you accommodate 10 bins um, along that major street? Certainly don't want them in ours. Um, so, uh, major issues there. Um, I've got, and I know it's a few last minutes that I've been called up. It wasn't aware of this meeting. 15 seconds. Um, Anyway, but I want to thank the council for this. Thank you. Thanks for that, Sula. Uh, okay, over to the councillors. Councillor Lee. Uh, just an alternate motion for refusal, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, it uh, refused on the following five grounds. Uh, does not respect neighbourhood character, unreasonable overshadow and overlooking into adjoining properties, overdevelopment of the site, lack of visitor car parking, and inadequate private open space to Unit 5. Happy to second that. Okay. Yes, Just a yes. question to the officers. Um, the report in the table identifies one uh, clause not met in this, as opposed to Massey Avenue with three. Um, <coughs> that goes to private open space. Um, is this private open space is listed here for Unit 5 at 38.2 square metres? Is that uh, deficient by? 1.8 metres, is it? Square? square. That's correct, Mr. Mayor. It's 1.8 metres. The uh, space is 38.2 and condition 1.1D uh, requires uh, the secluded private open space to be compliant with standard of the state. Subject to approval. Okay. Thank any you. Other, if there's no further questions, we have an alternative recommendation there. Any other councillors wish to speak? If not, I'll put that. To, uh, do you want to speak, Councillor? Just very quickly, um, I think uh, the area neighbourhood character need, does need to be looked at. Um, comment has been made about 20 Bailey Street, mm. but if you look at 20 Bailey Street, it actually presents as a four unit development, mm. uh, notwithstanding the fact it is five. What's more important is that the rear two of the four units are actually single storey developments, not double storey developments. So yeah. you need to look at the neighbourhood character in context. We also want to look at the fact that it is a, when you look at squeezing five onto 840, 
848 square metres of land, uh, when the previous application called for 920 square metres of land. So I think there are two minor issues, but when we do take everything into consideration in the context, uh, it's an over-development. Over mm. Just a, an extra point, if I may, as a second through you, Mr Chair. Um, we should not define our decisions by what might be considered areas of the past, and um, certainly those um, five units on a block in those cases I would not consider as consistent with neighbourhood character and certainly shouldn't dictate future decisions that we're making now in what is a pocket that is actually facing um, other, a range of other pressures to do with, uh, with development at either end as well. So we need to keep that in mind. Okay. Thank you, councillors. I'll put that alternative recommendation to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? Okay. Uh, members of the gallery, uh, Council has that decided to refuse that application. Council will now notice, notify the applicant of Council's decision to refuse the application. He will have 60 days to appeal to VCAT. Objectors will also be notified of Council's decision of a refusal for that matter. Thank you, Councillors. Next item of consideration is item 5.10 of 18 Delaware Street Reservoir. Over to the officers. <coughs> Thank you, officer. Thank you, councillors. This is an application for a medium distance development at 18 Delaware um, Street. The proposal is to construct three double storey dwellings and one single storey dwelling um, on the site. The first three dwellings would comprise two bedrooms and a single storey contain one bedroom in the study. Um, Councillors, this application was advertised in a normal fashion attracting 10 objections. The objections are summarised on page 211 of the agenda. Um, Councillors, our recommendation um, is that the project is supportable. Uh, sufficient open space, sufficient car parking, and good response to that context that we provide from the design um, worthy of support. So we are recommending the application in support of these conditions. Thank you for that, Peter. Uh, we have had a request from um, uh, one person to speak, and that's an objector, Andrew uh, Rhoda. Are you here, Andrew? Please take the seat in front of you, sir. You've got five minutes, Andrew. No, no, you continue on. Thank you, Mr Mayor and uh, councillors. Um, my name is Andrew Rodder. I'm a, a graduate architect and teacher at um, RMIT School of Architecture and Design. And I'm um, objecting to this proposal um, based on a number of concerns which I included in my early written submission and which um, have been acknowledged in the uh, report. Um, 20 Delaware Street is one of four original small weatherboard houses. Uh, the loss of number 20 would significantly impact on the visual cohesion of this um, segment of the street. Um, also, I'll note that um, the streetscape, as indicated in the agenda, set of item drawings, the south elevation still doesn't include the current context of the buildings either side of it. So, I sort of um, I question the report's um, indication that there was actually a streetscape um, acknowledgement or a and understanding the context um, in, the, in the submission. Um, uh, I just want to also point out that there's a potential problem with visitor car parking spaces in that Delaware Street is much narrower uh, than nearby Howard Street or Thackeray Streets run parallel. Um, and a de development of four units is um, somewhat of an overstretch given that um, the um, recent developments in the street um, I've been living in, um, in the city of Darwin for 25 years and fifth, uh, about 10 in Delaware. Um, but the recent developments in the street, uh, numbers 17, 15 and 16, have all been dual unit developments, not four. There are two um, four unit developments in the street, numbers 24 and 30. Um, but they were basically designed or built during the good design guide period in the early mid to mid 90s. Whereas um, Resco Clause 55 is a little bit more concerned with um, a particular amenity. Um, and I draw the attention to the issue of amenity. Um, as designed, none of these spaces on those four units have any more facing light. And in fact, the north elevation is a solid wall. 
Had the unit um, proposal or the development proposal been two units or possibly three, that would have allowed at least some ability to get some natural north light into those spaces. Um, the aspect of the site is northwest, uh, sorry, north, uh, north spring, north south. Um, so the only um, light that this uh, living space is actually get is east light, which is again um, going to be <coughs> problematic given the narrowness, relative narrowness of the block. Um, I have an issue with the materials that have been selected or lack of detail on materials. There's a number of houses being built or a number of unit developments being built in the area, all of which features strongly polystyrene and cement render and proposal aluminium window frames. Um, given the recent discussion from the Paris talks regarding sustainability, these buildings, while um, being easy to construct, have significant problems with the materials that have been used around the area. Um, they might give R ratings, but I can guarantee that none of these buildings actually show solar panels. None of, all these buildings will include air conditioning at some point. So the actual load these, um, this development takes is hardly a sustainable solution. So it might meet the, the green requirements, but it's unlikely in practice that these buildings will be sustainable. Um, I'm not against design or against construction or development. I draw the council's attention to some recent projects that have been making um, headlines in our department at the university. Um, Murray Grove Preston, Murray, oh, sorry, yeah, Murray Grove. Do you want to circulate yeah, those? Oh, sorry, it's Fred Lee's office. Oh, to Murray Road Preston and South Street Preston. Now, yeah, again, these are, these are contextual in that they, thank you. These are contextual in that they use materials honestly. They um, have a, a strong pressure of form. And I guess the issue really about designing to four buildings is that it precludes anything but a very sort of banal um, design by numbers kind of crunching exercise. So while it might actually be quite a risk, it's actually about a little bit. I'm thinking more in terms of the amenity for the occupants that actually have to live in these spaces. Mm. Um, so again, the ones that I'm sort of showing you there all use vernacular materials in a contemporary manner. I have no problem with brick veneer, but reverse brick veneer obviously is, is far more sustainable, so it's something that should be considered because again, being in a weatherboard uh, context, reverse brick veneer could actually work. So I guess, you know, the council obviously, you know, we're seeing some mas massive schemes this evening, um, but even though it's one that's small, I think the issues are still fundamentally important in terms of livability. Um, so I guess, really, um, to sum up, in recent months, there's been a rash of repetitive unimaginable developments devoid of site context. And I hope in this hearing, council may ask the developer to come back with a more considered scheme and then again, just merely not crunching those um, spaces into the seconds, uh, Andrew. cliche materials palette. So, look, my five minutes are almost up. Thank you for your time and your patience. It's been an incredibly long and nice. <laughs> and an informative one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Andrew. Thank you. Um, Okay, over to councillors. Uh, Councillor Greco. I have an alternative motion, Mr. Mayor. Well, we hear the alternative motion, Councillor Greco. Okay, I'll, I'll read it out um, for, for councillors. That, that council refused the proposal with grounds as follows. One, the proposal does not meet the objectives of Clause 22.04 Neighbourhood Character Policy in terms of not responding to the preferred neighbourhood character of the area through insufficient secluded private open space. Two, the proposal does not meet the objectives of Clause 55 of the Darwin Planning Scheme, more particularly A, non-compliance with residential policy, as the proposal is an overdevelopment standard B2, and B, that the, um, uh, in relation to non-compliance with secluded private open space for dwelling for clause 55.05-4 B28 private open space. Have been a second, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Rolella, as seconder. Anyone wants May. to speak? Uh, could we just move an amendment to note the deficiencies on, in terms of clause 5504-4 in relation to wall boundaries? Yes. Yes. Include that in the movement? Because it's in the report. Can we hear that again, yeah. Councillor Lawrence? Um, so that's an additional point. Wall, wall on boundaries. It, in yeah. the, the officer's report, wall on boundaries fails to comply. Yeah. And it's, it's yeah. So we need to actually include that as, include as, that as, a, as, a, as an additional point. Yeah, I'm yeah. happy to do yeah. that. Which is 55.04-2. B18. Yep. Can, I, can I just see, because I didn't hear if <coughs> Councillor Greco had included, maybe he can clarify, um, clause 55.03-10 B15 parking location? Mm -hmm. yep. That was included? No, no, it isn't. No, I didn't hear that. I, I would just note Good. that that is not, not compliant according to the mm -hmm. officer's report as With well. With standard. So, so an additional point? That, I would propose that would be an additional yes. point that should be included. Yes. Yep. 
Yes. Okay. So can happy to include that. Happy yep. to include that. Okay. In the interest of the debate, no, I just want to speak against. If I can. speak against, Councillor Cedars. Um, I'm sympathetic to the position that was put by the resident, and also sympathetic to, to the motion, as distinct from from the two previous motions which I supported in refusal. Um, I have to be compelled by the aerial photography that's presented to us in as much as that within the same street we do have two renditions of four unit developments which have already occurred and uh, nearing towards Mendip Road you have smaller renditions one which is three and there are two of uh, a dual occupancy nature in a tandem configuration so the problem that we've got with this is that VCAT will take into account the site context. And in this particular regard, I think our position in refusal will fail. The aggravated circumstance in terms of trying to defend our position in this circumstance will be that we are reliant too much on a secondary or non-core planning position, which is a value judgment in terms of the impact of additional developments which are occurring in an existing street which has already had previous developments. That has been deliberately taken out of the planning context um, as a tool for us to uh, stop the flow of, of developments and we all know that. And The reason for that is because if tra traffic impacts were incorporated as a primary consideration, none of these developments would ever get off the ground. And that's our problem. So if we had been disarmed of our primary weapon to stop what we believe to be inappropriate developments where they've already previously have existed within a street, then we have no, no uh, real chance of, uh, of satisfying VCAT in terms of our position, and for that reason I'll be voting against this now. Thank you, Councillor Sirtis. Any further speakers? No. I can't ask a question, can I, Mr. Mayor? No, it's too late. No, okay, that's okay. Uh, okay, I'll put that to a vote for the alternative recommendation to refuse the, 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 the item. All those in favour? Those against? That item, uh, members of the gallery, has been refused by council. Uh, the applicant will be advised of council's decision of a refusal for that matter, <coughs> and have 60 days of uh, appeal to, to VCAT. Objectors will also be notified of council's decision of a refusal. Next item of consideration, uh, councillors, is item 5.11, 1 Hawker Avenue, Preston. Over the officers. Thank you, councillors. This is an application for the community density the uh, proposal is to construct uh, six lines, three triple storey and uh, three double storey. Um, next, as this application is advertised in a normal fashion, attracting 12 objections, the objections are summarised in the agenda. Um, Cancers, from a planner's point of view, assessing the application. Uh, initially, we were somewhat alarmed with the triple story component, but then looking at the context of the site, the slope of the land, the fact that there's a uh, right away bubble um, to the east and plenty, the rear of plenty road properties uh, of the commercial nature um, and some of the residential nature, we formed the view this response does work in that the doesn't impact on uh, the sense of neighbouring open space. The three-storey component is centrally located uh, on the site. Um, closer to the right of way and furthest from the property to the west and, and south. Um, Councils, we believe the project is supportable. Uh, I might also mention here, in this instance, the applicant has chosen to provide one visit to our parking space on the site. Um, access on the lane road. Councils, we recommend the support of conditions. Thank you very much for that, Peter. Uh, we have uh, two people requested to speak on, on this matter. We have the applicant's representative and the deputy. Can we hear from um, Chris, please, uh, who's representing the applicant? First set down with council planners, there was some uncertainty about whether 
uh, it was a suitable approach to look at this site uh, as one that might uh, accommodate some element of the three-storey development. Uh, we worked through a series of issues with your planners from prior to actually lodging the application and through your process. A little bit formulating your proposal that we think is properly related to what you are trying to achieve in terms of change and where you would prefer to see it happen. The reality is this site sits immediately behind Plenty Road with the laneway that serves the back of Plenty Road as one of our boundaries. So we're a street before, a new street, a new street before you get to Tyler Street. So we have the tram, the shops and Plenty Road as part of our context. Granted, we are in more gravity, we know that, and that's where the moderation and the balance and the way we have designed this comes <coughs> into play. Your policies are clearly promoting Plenty Road to change to the apartments and mixed use developments. What is on our list will change. It will change and it will be bigger than what we are. We will be the next thing behind things that are at least four storeys, potentially large, depending on what happens with your policies. There's no doubt that Tony Road is being targeted for at least four stories in this location. How then do you come to a proposal where on our own way we have a mix of two and three story development? The reason why Tony Road is a mix of four stories is because of all of those facilities, such as the tram and the shops and the ability to access services, that planning policy state and planning policy local say this is one of the most highly preferred locations to support people living so that they can have the benefit of all those things we are making business. We're effectively 13 years further away from everything that supports four story apartments. Our proposal is a mix of two and three story townhouses. It's a genuine step you know, from what's happening just on the boundary. We also see ourselves as being a genuine transition to what will then happen further into. You, you may or may not be familiar, but it's a very similar layout to this proposal. It's been approved with council support just in Rosebury Avenue here next to the fire station, which is the cafe that we recently developed. That's the exact same model. The client who came in with this is aware that I was involved with that approval, which the office has supported and was approved. And again, we think, is this a site where something like that might be suitable? I think it has a lot of the same features in terms of being a laneway, right behind shops, close to transport, all of those things. So we present as two stories in the hall Avenue, and as you said, we have three stories, middle block, and the laneway. It's important on scheme, yes, we do have four projections. If you've had the chance to read them, you might know several of them are from Northbrook, from Thornbury, from places that they have in there. Some of them are from nearby property and we from one person to another, certainly. What we don't have is objections from the two neighbours who you might think would be most concerned by this proposal. Number three, Hawker, on our west, the next house in the street, has no objection. That's largely because, well, we don't really know. What we have done is we've given a complete three metre ground floor setback along their boundary, and then there's three units in the middle that have the extra floor on them, set between 6.1 and 6.6 .6 metres off their boundary. So there's a very real sense of pulling the three stories away from where it would be sensitive and having it closer to the line line where in time we're expecting three and four storey development experts. So we'll form now the transition from the apartments to the neighbour. And the neighbours understood that it's not objective. You've also been able to come under to the rear, so that's not, that's not objective, I can see the clock. We're three and a half metres clear back our rear with our visitor car space and the garden area with landscaping. So our people to the south with their backyard haven't objected either. So that's the two people who you most think might be concerned by this are in fact not concerned by it. There are other people who are opposite and who are further away who haven't objected. Context is everything. This is one where the context gets something different. The opposite is very far enough for me that it's an emotional view. Thank you for that, Chris. Uh, we've had um, a request from one objector to present this evening, uh, Liam Amara. Uh, Liam, if you can take the phone. And I do apologise for waiting all night, but we've got a fair bit on tonight. Sorry, 
Thanks, Liam. This evening, so over to the councillors. Uh, Councillor Lee. Uh, yes, I also circulated an earlier uh, alternative motion for refusal um, on the following three grounds. Um, the proposed use is an overdevelopment of the site. The proposal does not comply with standard B7 in relation to B building height of the Darabin planning scheme, and the proposal is contrary to Council's neighbourhood character guideline for precinct D5. Thank you, Councillor. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Gregor. Any comments from councillors? Any discussion? Councillor Lee? Just very quickly, uh, it's just pushing the boundary too far in, in this application. Uh, it is uh, half a metre over the res code uh, in relation to 9.5 compared to the 9, 9 metres allowed on the res code. I think that's, that's a significant uh, breach uh, in that it does seek to dominate a local area. Uh, but the issue of uh, neighbourhood character is probably worthwhile elaborating. Um, even though the applicant tried to sell the idea that it, it sort of, uh, it's a transition point, uh, what we approved along neighbor, uh, Plenty Road is in the commercial zone. This is in the general residential zone. So mm -hmm. we're talking different zones here. Let's get it right. If we do want to build apartments and, and what have you, at least um, make sure they comply with the building uh, res code that we, we have in place. This site is ready for development. I have no doubt about it. It can support double storey um, um, residential development. Um, we have seen those happening um, in that transition point between commercial zone and residential zone. But uh, going three storeys, uh, right abutting to a, a general residential zone, it's not something that's supported by me. Thank you, Councillor Lee. Councillor Gregor, anything further to add? No? Uh, I just, all I'd just say that it, this, this proposal actually really, really pushes the boundaries on, on, what's a, on what would be an acceptable neighbourhood character. Okay, thank you. If there's no other speaker, I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour? Carried. Have that noted as unanimous, please. Yeah. Mm, note that <coughs> uh, members of the gallery, council has now refused that application. The applicant will be notified of council's decision and be given 60 days of appeal right to VCAT. Objectors will also be notified of council's decision to refuse that matter. Final item of consideration tonight um, is a 5.12 application for planning permit, 1 Willoughby Street Reservoir. Officers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This application seeks approval to develop three double storey dwellings and a single storey dwelling uh, at the rear, providing four dwellings in total. Three of the dwellings comprise uh, two bedrooms and the remaining is a three bedroom. Uh, this too is a repeat uh, planning application. Uh, it's submitted before you with guidance from VCAT, and I think the officer's report is very clear on how that's been achieved. Uh, Mr. Mayor, on page 254. Uh, there was an issue regarding uh, front building setbacks. That was addressed through an amendment to a plan 
which I think has made the application even more water tight in terms of the assessment, uh, and that was subsequently advertised. In terms of the application being advertised, uh, there have been uh, six objections received. These are detailed for the councillors and for the committee on pages 256 to 258 of the officer's report, and there's a response on each of the points. Uh, one of the challenges with a number of these, uh, Mr Mayor, is uh, there, there's already been a decision and, and guidance from VCAT in the application before you in the officer's uh, assessment. Uh, follows that guide and the recommendation is that the application be supported. Thank you very much for that. Um, we have had a request from um, three people to speak, uh, one applicant's representative and two objectors. So I might hear from the applicant's representative. I'm assuming that's you. Vito Saniti. Thank you. You have five minutes. Next door in the cinema screen, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Get yes. popcorn, did we serve you popcorn? <laughs> a bit more subtle next door, it blows. But <laughs> anyway, thanks guys, uh, Mr Mayor and Councillors. Uh, my name is Vito Sanini from Professional Planning, and um, as the applicant of the proposed board dwelling development, I thank you for the opportunity to briefly explain some of the key features from a design point of view. Um, I think they're in detail pretty well, but I thought I might just touch on a couple of others. Of I've put together here, I've waited so long, mate, so well. <laughs> um, for our folks on specifics, I'd like to set the scene by respectfully noting that Council overturned a notice of position to grant a planning permit last year for a proposal of four double storey dwellings. Um, although the design and application was handled by another design office, we have been provided with all the relevant info to formulate a new application and now address the issues accordingly. Um, it was decided in October last year that the previous design was bulky. The fourth dwelling should have been single level and the upper level of the two middle units were too close to the neighbour on the north side, basically tipping this proposal into an open development. <coughs> the client decided to test the application of VCAT, only to find out that they affirmed council's decision to refuse the application also. Um, it was acknowledged by the member um, of VCAT and also the council advocate, Mr Dietrich, that four dwellings on the site were suitable, but uh, did require some alterations. Um, when our design team was commissioned in March this year to take on the project, we made it clear to our client that we need to look at the VCAT decision closely and work with the council's planning team and getting the design right and sufficiently address what was outlined in the VCAT decision. In doing so, it became evident that many of the concerns which were raised by the neighbours also became redundant as the final design has now achieved all levels of compliance. As such, it was straightforward to adjust the design of the four dwellings and lodge a fresh application. Uh, some of the features of this block and lane include um, the, the corner site has a generous width of 15 metres plus the right of way uh, adjacent to it. It has a total area of 738 square metres and that's not including the lane. This site is within an area that is familiar to medium density development with a string of single and double storey dwellings in the immediate surrounding area. The site is flanked by a 3 metre laneway to the south and also a 3 metre laneway to the west providing a wider buffer to the surrounding neighbours, which is ideal for a form of uh, redevelopment. The proposal now seeks approval for a single level dwelling at the rear of the subject site as opposed to a double storey dwelling which was previously applied for. Approximately the back third of the site is now single storey, protecting the backyard realm and removing any form of bulk. The proposed development will only cover 48% of the site and adequately provides 30% 30, 30 of permeability including large areas within the front and rear yards for significant and mature landscaping. Our front setback is consistent with Council's policies both at ground and first floor levels. Uh, we've also allowed for sufficient site setbacks for the tidal boundaries. And there are several metres of separation between the new townhouses that we're proposing and the existing dwellings in the south. The rear yards for all four dwellings are in a prime location facing north and each dwelling will enjoy in excess of 40 square metres of private open space. In addition to this, the site is well located to Edwards Lake, Chris Park and uh, the Reservoir West Footy Ground. The proposal is an appropriate response to the neighbourhood character, given the site is located within an area that has been identified for high density growth in the future. The proposal is consistent with the emerging neighbourhood character and complies with all of the objectives and standards of Clause 55. Not having any offside amenity impacts, and we believe that a high end quality development such as this will enhance the commercial viability within this area. And I encourage all councillors to look favourably upon our proposal. Thanks very much. Thanks for that. Um, if you can take your seat. Uh, I, I, two uh, objectors 
listed here to speak. Um, are, are they in the other room? Can no. Um, can, Peter, can you have a look, please? So, um, could you please take your, your position back to the gallery? Um, <coughs> over to you, Councillors. Councillor Villar. I have an, alter an alternative motion, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Let's hear it. And it is, it was, circu well, it, it was circulated today um, that, uh, that the application be refused on the, fo on the following, uh, for the following reasons. One, the proposal does not respect the neighbourhood character of the area, particular particularly in regard to the size of the upper floor of dwelling one. Number two, the secluded private open space area serving dwelling one is insufficient in terms of the area and layout and does not meet the needs of, the, of a three bedroom dwelling. And point three, that the site is an overdevelopment. You have a second? Councillor Gregor. Okay. Any other comments from councillors? Anyone wish to speak for or against? Council I'll speak Lawrence. against the motion. Um, yes, just going through this, uh, the assessment report, um, the, the key things such as open space are met and um, initially it is very tempting to just reject all four storey, develop, four unit developments on a 739 square metre block, um, which in reservoir is a standard size and it goes through to 800 square metres. Um, and under our previous uh, scheme, um, that would have been, uh, 15 years ago, it would have been a three unit site. Now, this, why does it actually meet all the side setbacks and all the uh, open space is because there's actually 207 square metres of laneway uh, wrapping around the dwelling. And so, while well, normally I'd say this is easily, comfortably a three unit site, because of the actual uh, laneway, it then becomes 940 square metres of space. And that's why every unit in this development exceeds the ones people okayed at number one, Massey Avenue. Um, so I don't think there's any technical grounds to refuse this because this is fundamentally like the corner site. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. Uh, if there's no further comments or discussion from councillors, I'll put the alternative recommendation to a vote. All those in favour? Those against? That's a tie. I'll use my casting vote to vote against the alternative recommendation. So subsequently, that alternative recommendation is lost. Do we have an alternative motion? Second the officer recommendation. Councillor Sears moves the officer's recommendation. Councillor Lawrence <laughs> seconds. The, the officer recommendation. Any discussion there, councillors? I think Councillor Lawrence put it well. Oh, no, I want to uh, speak against it, Mr. Mayor. I don't think a laneway is compensation for you know private open space. It has to be determined by an a planning application of this sort. Thank you, Councillor. Laneway is why the private open space. Thank you, councillors. That's all. I'll, I have to say. I'll put that to a vote. All those in favour of the officer recommendation. Those against. That's a tie. I subsequently use my casting vote to support the officer's recommendation. It's now yeah. called a division. Councillor Greco calls a, a division. All those in favour of the recommendation from the officers as listed. I name Councillor Cedars, Councillor Pontano, Councillor. Councillor Valella, are you? Oh, oh sorry. Councillor, <laughs> the wrong way. Wrong. Sorry, it's getting late. Cheers. I'll then request those to stand up who voted against the officer's recommendation. My name is Councillor Lee, Councillor McCarthy, Councillor Greco, Councillor Dillala. Thank you very much, Councillors. Thank you. Councillors, I note that it's uh, seven minutes to ten. That concludes our <laughs> Mr. Mayor, items. I'll move items six consider, other business. Uh, that we consider move on block 6.1 and 6.2. Councillor seconded. 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 So we have a recommendation to consider those items on block by Councillor Cedars, Councillor Walsh. All those in favour? And That's now, Mr. Carried. Mayor, I'll move Council. that way. Now, Councillor Cedars moves that we vote on block. And Councillor Walsh, all those in favour? And thank That's you very carried. much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well done, 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 Mr.